Alrighty, hello, hello. Hope you're all doing well today and hope you're ready to jump into some all clan. The Gabos. The chaotic Gabos. Uh since the last time we played them, it has been overhauled, so new content there, which I am looking forward to. I know that all clan is a favorite of a lot of people, so I am ready to see how it goes. <clears throat> uh hello, Froyo, Mark of Bark, Candy, good to see you. Nurkor, Black God, uh Cherry Picking, hello. Uh, Alexander the Great, Fullsec, Mister. Hope you're all doing well. Dak, no, no Dak, no Dak for us. Dak's a little bit far away from where we're hoping to be. We're going to be in the Northern Serpent Spine here, uh, which leaves us with a couple of options of who we can go with, and I haven't chosen yet because I'm fine with any of them. And I wanted to ask you guys uh, who we wanted to start as. Uh, Kath Narian and Sputnik Bra, hello, hello. Uh, did a goblin run a couple of days ago with spider wretch missions aren't great, but it was really fun <clears throat> True spider wretch is an option that we could do I don't think we should but we could we could <laughs> It's possible. Uh, hey fallen hearts. Okay, let's let's switch in here so we can Kind of get a look at the possibilities uh, Of what we can do all goblins conform all clan. Yes, but the mission, the requirements for it require you to be in the Northern Service line, if I recall correctly. If I recall correctly. Um, so, we definitely want to be in that area. Cav, Poe confirmed? Nah. Nah, not me. Especially not Goblin Cav. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. No, no, no. All right. <clears throat> all clan nation built upon a foundation of three goblins in a trench coat four goblins in a trench coat thank you very much but yes all right so we have a couple options i was looking at we have mountain shark we have true dagger and we have rail skulker i guess we could start a snot finger i don't know if snot finger is content though uh, i'm pretty sure like rail skulker kind of fits into the all clan a lot better um, content wise true dagger is all about assassinating leaders <laughs> which I mean is entertaining in and of itself but not quite the vibe we're going for uh, Stuffinger makes funny drugs silly goblins silly goblins do we want to go for for real skulker mountain shark I don't know mountain shark the shark things I don't know I don't, I don't really, I looked at some of it, okay? But, I don't know, they, they just go to Mithridoom, and they do Mithridoom things. But why don't we just eat Mithridoom things, you know? I think we go Rail Skulker. We've done a lot of migratory people in the Serpent Spine, so let's do one that's more, more settled down. Spider Wretch or no balls. Let's go, Spider Wretch! No, no, no. We save Spider Wretch for the funny run where we go and flip Centaur military and, and then have a horde of Spider Wretch spider riding goblins that's the that's the play there all right uh so we have a real skulker 244 uh we will play on hard i will most definitely regret this when marhold enters the tunnels but hey you know what what is life without a little risk right they're magic mushrooms does that count as a deck run <laughs> no Mountain Sharks don't quite work with Alkaline. It's a special government focused, which gets changed when we're Alkaline. Ah, okay. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, we'll turn on Great Conquerors. That's fine. Uh, also, you may hear my keyboard being squeaky, but I got my my new keyboard in and I was set it up. So it's here now. So you won't hear the clickety clacking. Uh, still nothing to do with Great Conquer variants. We don't need to enable or disable any regions. Disable Canor? Confirmed? <laughs> That's definitely a flag. What do you mean? This is a beautiful flag. This is a beautiful flag. All right, we have Clan, Bo Clan Boss Brack Rail Skulker, a 244 expansionist, which is perfect. That is exactly what we need. We're going to focus mill because, you know, we're a monster. So we got to focus mill because we start off on tech two and there are dwarves that are tech three on our border. Uh, native policy, we go for native repression because we are in the serpent spine. And we are, in fact, monstrous. But that does mean we have access to the really good uh, reforms for monsters. Now, don't worry. We are going to... We will reform out of being tribes this time. Uh, but I'm not sure... 
I mean, global settler increase is actually super useful for us this time. Disable the serpent spy. <laughs> yeah, true, true, true. Kill the ASAP, like, month two? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I am going to rush them down. Uh, Reforge the Dwarvacron. I don't believe we start off with any of that, so we'll turn that off for now. And there it is. Form all clan. All provinces in the West Dwarvar region. One of the following must be true. Provinces in the area of Animal's Horn, Crack Doom, or Dead End Tunnel are owned by me. I don't... Does that mean that we need to own the entire West Dwarvar or one of those areas in the West Dwarvar? I don't know. I don't care. We're going to take it all anyways, so... And I want to do all of Rail Silker's missions before we, uh, we change. Update the restart counter? No, we don't need to restart. Easy. Uh, disaster in the caves can happen. Internet beer gets developed. We can get stab cost and national unrest. Okay. 12 Diplo. I mean, we are not going to want to develop the institution in our capital. It's too expensive. But I am going to want to get that done. Uh, but we are goblinistic. Shamanism plus two tolerance of heathens and 10% looting speed. The original religion of most goblins. It is a polytheistic and shamanistic religion containing elements of ancestor worship and animism. It is a very diverse and fluid religion with each subgroup claiming their favorite gods are the most important and often taking over elements from the religions of subjugated and allied peoples. It is divided into multiple cults which are seen as equally valid by the people, equally wrong by the philosophers, and equally useful by the magistrate. So we get to choose our benefits here. Uh, we will unlock more as we go. But for right now, we have land maintenance and land attrition, trade steering and movement speed, dev cost and trade efficiency, or production efficiency. Production would make us the most money, but considering we need to develop early on, no matter what, we're going to go with the dev one. I think it'd be um, foolish to not choose that. Okay, uh, let's get our tribe set up here. Governing capacity available loot, greater autonomy for chieftains, larger tribal hosts. Sure. Neighbor raid. Sell, seize, summon the diet. You want my army to be 75% of the force limit, which is currently at 23. Let's hire a bunch of mercenaries. And then hire bunch of troops as well we will immediately expand infrastructure in our capital um and send a call it well yeah we'll send a colonist down there and we'll get a general i don't really want to turn this guy into a general he is too good for that oh, i need three thousand manpower here cancel this one Okay, prepare the scouts. We have received many reports of strange sounds, minor rumbling, and sometimes faint light in the far tunnels. Our people grow more afraid day after day, so it is necessary that we investigate these events. In response to the call for investigations, around 3,000 brave goblins under a general have assembled to explore some of the old tunnels and find the source of these troubling events. How racist are we? Not at all. Yeah, no, we're arguably probably one of the most inclusive tags in the surface spine. Uh, after a month of exploring and mapping out the tunnels, our goblins approached what seemed to be a small light through a crevice. The general ordered a spearhead of some scouts to squeeze through the crevice and see what was on the other side. After a few hours, they returned. The scouts claimed that the other side of the crevice was a natural balcony overlooking a massive cave in which there was a dwarven adventurer's band camp. This camp consists of thousands of messy, rugged tents that were set up fast without too much comfort in mind, and fading lights from campfires were seen all across the base. Considering that the campfires were out, the spearhead assumed the inhabitants were asleep and descended down to explore the camp. Upon entering the camp, they quickly found out the dwarves had some interesting weapons, and thus they took it with them. After an hour or so, some dwarves started to make noises, so the spearhead assumed they were waking and returned to the balcony to squeeze through the crevice once again. Sadly, they did not manage to figure out the name of these peculiar adventurers. After letting them rest for a bit, the general ordered the return to Air Natvir with these weapons and the knowledge they had gained. After a small amount of time, the cave suddenly collapsed, and a large portion of the army was cut off. Only screams and dwarfish cries of battle were heard from the group that was cut off. We can only assume that some dwarves noticed the spearhead and followed them. Upon discovering the scout group, they warned the soldiers and set up a trap. Only the leader, one cartographer, and a few scouts were left now, with most of our knowledge lost, save for the adventurer's location and a map leading to nowhere. Revenge will be ours. 
Permanent claim on the rail yard exchange area. We will discover it. Permanent claim on Stunad Kozanad area. And we discover it. We lose 3,000 manpower. How dare they? We just took some weapons, okay? It's not that big of a deal. It's not that big of a deal. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Is the music even playing? Yes. It is. Uh, on a scale of 960, I, I don't know how else to tell you that, like, all clan is actually an accepting tag. Like, no meme? No meme? Ooh, we start with gold. Like, all clan legitimately is pretty accepting. Uh, yeah, in the cradle and all that. Yeah. Uh, we should probably wait for all these guys to be built, and then we'll go for it. Yep, he immediately runs away. I'm not even worried about them. I'm more worried about the natives that are going to be in, <laughs> in here. Uh, you can cancel these troops, actually. Save a bit of manpower. Okay, and let's do this. That's unfortunate. Let's get a Montek. Do a uh, regular conquest war in case they don't fight us. We have a general of 40 tradition. Uh, return to tradition. Well, I can't walk them off to not have them. But I do want this guy and not this guy. So we're just going to have to accept that we're going to lose some mill points here. Okay. We're losing a little bit of money a month. That's fine. Let's go ahead and encourage development in our capital. And develop it up to 12 Diplo Dev. We'll help our economy a little bit as well. Not much, but a little bit. Then all of our manpower is going to be put towards dealing with uh, these. Ooh, we're definitely going to want to go and get that expedition target next. It is in our home state, too, so it's another good reason to grab it. Because we're going to want to do expeditions, even though we're not migrating. Uh, can you check out Gob Mill units and admin? Should all be different. Oh, that's true. Yeah, so Goblin Administration, minus 5% dev cost, 10% production efficiency. Minus 15% national tax, 20% spy network, 10% advisor cost, 10% diplo tech cost, minus 10% military tech cost. For the military, we have 20% national manpower, 15% manpower recovery speed, 15% land force limit, minus 10% land maintenance, minus 10% artillery cost, minus 20% cavalry and galley combat ability, plus 10% reinforced speed, 10% siege ability, 15% land fire damage. Plus 10% fire, shock, and morale damage received. And plus 5% special unit force limit. Oof. That's what I have to say about that. We take a lot of damage. A lot of damage. And then as for our units, we start with Clan Rabble, which has no fire. <laughs> and we don't get new units at Tech 5. We get new units at Tech 9. Love God Mill. Two out of five negatives don't apply at all. What do you mean? Oh, are you talking about cavalry and galley? I'm throwing the siege. How am I throwing on the siege? Tell me, tell me how I threw on the siege I just completed. Inform me. Okay, there's feudalism. We purge warband here, right? Oh, no, we can't. Can we not do that? Nuts. That's sad. What is even Goblin Cav? Uh, spiders. If you're looking for an actual answer. We accept. Yeah, I know, but I was thinking about getting the... Uh, 
the wait did they get rid of purge warband is that no longer a thing down okay so you're telling me that if i open it back up it's gonna be very obvious that it's right there is that what you're telling me you're very excited hey, hey, hey look we are very accepting okay i just want the thing it's an objective yeah i'm i'm super fucking blind yeah it's right there yeah okay look look guys okay look i got nothing uh let's I guess core it up then. Get our capital up to 12 production. Our goblin food stockpiles are all filled with a lot of mushrooms. This is logical because these mushrooms make up most of the food we possess, but there seems to be an unexpected side effect. Lately, we have noticed these side effects on a large scale. Our people become calmer and more relaxed after supper, but also crave more and more. After launching an investigation, we figured out that mushrooms, although edible and providing a good food source, produce effects similar to an addictive drug. Our clan boss sees potential in this and ordered the expansion of our mushroom farms. All right, till the end of the game, we get minus 0.5 national unrest and minus 5% stop cost. And now I need to own Virgo Cozenad. And it will become Gabo. Okay. That's fine. Sure. Uh, so now... Oof. Ouch. Ouch. Oof. Ouch. Ouch. Fire you. Can't actually afford you. Uh, we can turn off the dev cost here, and I'm actually going to stab up. We're going to let some prosperity start ticking in our capital. Uh, yes, there is one expedition in sight. This one. It's right next to us. But I think we should probably snag Virko Kozenad for... Well... No, because even if we take Virko Kozenad, I won't have the money to repair it unless I do an expedition. So we should probably do the expedition first. Arc workers, we push drugs on everyone? No... Yes. Uh, Ballin, hello. Thank you for the 14 months. Oh, look, they're in the service mine. The only thing that would have made this more poey is if he was dwarves. Well, we're not dwarves. We're gobbos. Okay, we are gobbos and we do gobbo things. I can get more money from tax. Sure. He'll help pay for himself a little bit. A little bit. We do also have, uh, this sweet, sweet gold province. So I'm going to develop that a little bit. Uh, free money, yeah. Free money for the gold. Free money for the gold. But I don't really want to dev it too much because I want to make sure that we're taking techs and developing institutions. Obviously, feudalism, we'll get through it spreading. Oh, man, it's a good thing we're not going to go republic, right? Not anytime soon. All right, well, once uh, once you're able to come of age and, you know, rule this country, you will. You will. Uh, tribal wars. Natives lose size and we gain 30 ducats. Crowns. Let's go. Hunting time, beloved heir die. Why are you guys so mean? What? Why can't we just have an heir survive? Is there something that wrong with that? Like, come on, come on, come on. Apparently we can convert this province. Do I care? Yeah, I kind of care. <sighs> How do you play Real Silker before All Clan got taken out? I played All Clan. <laughs> But uh, we stopped. It's been redone. So now we're going to give it another shot. Uh, ancestor gods. The doors we have conquered seem to possess a strange way of venerating their ancestors. Though those wretches are obviously not worthy of any respect, given goblins ruled the serpent's spine long before they arose. It has inspired a renewed appreciation of our own ancestors. I believe that gives us legitimacy 
And also that means it gives us Republican tradition, which means most of the game we're probably gonna have ancestor worship uh, until maybe we convert. I'm not sure if we're gonna go cube or not. Um, We'll see. The Harpy Religion one's the best. That's just because it's horny. That that you can't just be like, yeah, the Harpy one's the best. That's not true. <clears throat> uh, and plus two taunts true faith. Yeah, like the dwarf one is very, very good. It's very good. Point making the gun must be as dwarfy as possible. No, the dwarfs just have you know some decent ideas. Okay. You have to learn from your enemies. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you mean the synergy event, movement speed. Yeah, true. That is true. Best religion is the thought or God lost. You and I looking at the same religion? Uh, hey, Seymour. Cube goblins. I'm disgusted but intrigued. Well, we go technocracy, so it would make sense. But we do, we run into the problem where, yes, we will be a technocracy, but we are a technocracy in the serpent spine, which means... Nothing. We don't, we don't get any kind of artificer capacity for a long, long time. Best religion is the Regent Court. Unironically, best religion right now probably is Regent Court. Probably is. Especially with the... You can, like, choose your event. Like you can switch your god and you can get special events with them if they match your ruler's personality traits. It's very good. Divine for being gob. I mean, yeah, but like still, we're not gonna have like precursor relics. And the odds are we don't get dames tier, and we don't actually want our capital to flip to anything else. Also, we can't deepen our capital until tech. Oh, it's only tech five now. Okay, well, that's not too bad. It used to be like tech seven or something. It used to be tech seven. Your government lets you increase artifice capacity by three infinitely. Huh. Easy fix. Conquer Rawhead and drill some temples. I'm sure nothing bad would happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nothing nothing bad would happen. <laughs> the rending. <laughs> the rending, boys. The rending. I believe the rending is in now, at least partially. So uh, it is no longer free to dig those temples. Also, I realize that I can take that. But I'd rather not until we embrace institution. If we can help it. If we can get away with it. If we're about to max out on monarch points, then yeah, we may just take it. But for now, I'd rather just wait. Rather just wait. Well, here's the thing. We could develop our capital, actually. Up to 40. Because we need it to be 40 anyways to dig. What is the rending? <laughs> uh, it's a disaster. It's going to happen in Holest. And it's going to tear that continent apart. Not like literally, but kind of literally. Lazy di <laughs> True, lazy diplomats. Those damn diplomats. What am I paying them for? Good sir, why are you throwing? Um, I don't know. Colonize your hold? What? No. No, 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 no. I'm going here first, okay? I'm going here first, so that way I can get the expedition target. Because to complete this, I mean, I do get money, sure, but... Actually, no, I am throwing. Well, it's too late now, I already started. <clears throat> uh, it sounds like classic cobalt events, to be honest. Much destruction equals no dev. I mean, it literally invaded <laughs> Yeah, the spirits of Holesk get a little upset about everything. And they decide to take it out on everyone. Uh, I kind of want to wait for prosperity to develop in my capital, though, because it's already super expensive. 
Uh, imagine being banks and just struggling off literal merging of different reality planes because your state structure is just that good. <laughs> imagine ignoring it all because you just like spirits a lot and you're like, yeah, okay, I'm cool with this. Only shock when the evil spirit does evil. It's not even necessarily evil spirit. It's just, you know, a spirit that the Oni pissed off. A lot. I'm going to delete those. We don't need them anymore. Uh, we are at max manpower. Power of the Gabos. So let's build a bunch of dudes up. Right. Don't really want to move them onto here because then it's going to cause them to rise up, but. Ooh, it didn't! Huge. Our commandant has died? No! Fort defense. And we can barely afford to have this guy. Technically losing. Oh no, we're not even losing money because we're done converting. Look at that. I don't think we're going to be able to embrace feudalism unless I want to develop this road. Yeah, we're going to max out on mill points. So either we need to develop our capital or we need to take the tech. I think I'm kind of siding on developing the capital. I think it's, it's worth more. We're not really at threat of anybody right now. We have plenty of manpower to colonize, like... I have the monarch points, so there we go. And then I can still take tech. Easy. Easy claps. Who will attack you? Oh, True Dagger. <laughs> We've all seen it happen. True Dagger migrates down here and kills Rail Skulker. I don't want to be that Rail Skulker. The Bat Flu. Uh, sucks to suck. I, I don't have money to pay for it. Sorry. Sorry, not in the cards. Did you expand it or did you throw? Uh, technically, for the last click, I threw. But for the other ones, they were fine. For the other ones, they were fine. You have a brain, I think. So you should be able to defeat an equal army of lesser tech. Am I wrong? Though? No, it, it'd be done. They just assassinate our leader and we just fall. We'd be in shambles. They really didn't need to add COVID to Ampenar. <laughs> the bat flu. <laughs> no, that's just regular flu. I hate to tell you. Hate to tell you. Bats do really do be carrying diseases. They really do. It's actually a pretty, pretty big deal. Like in the US, you can't... I don't have 30 crowns. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, in the U.S., you can't visit caves. Like on the, it gets split in the Rockies. I think is where it gets split. So on west of the Rockies and east of the Rockies, you can't visit caves in the same amount of time because you can carry different diseases back and forth. If you do that, it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. What is surface rot? A common cough? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Only. Only cringe people get the serpent's rot, okay? Simply don't get sick. Don't get sick. Uh, duh. There we go, we're tech four. <laughs> hey, Mr. Newt, is this the fabled fake all clan run? No, this is the real all clan run. This is the real all clan run. What do you mean? What do you mean, fake all clan run? Service route wouldn't be an issue if you washed your damn hands. Or if the dwarves changed out the filters in their air system every once in a while. That's probably what it is. Last game I had the Serpent's Rot stay entirely in the Serpent's Reach. Sucks to be them. <laughs> they really do suck to be in the Serpent's Reach, huh? Serpent's Rot. Surrounded by elves. It really doesn't get much worse. 
Uh, is this a tolerant run? Yes, it is. We already have dwarves. They're not accepted, but eventually they will be. Uh, I don't think I have any reason to hold off on taking Diplotech. I mean, maybe we can wait to get a minus 10% neighbor bonus, but... I'm not going to. Because it's plus 15 sellers. And colonizing fast is good. Is good. Right, and then we can... Actually, maybe I should have taken that attack. Nah, I'll be fine. Just wanted to do this expedition. Zatara, we should go for the team and have everyone integrated. The problem with that is we would have to get to Haramari and Ruinborn. That would be difficult. That would be very difficult. All right, we can start... Oh. There you go. Oh, okay. Uh, crushing rubies. Our fallen brothers will be avenged. They have been slaughtered in a cowardly ambush set up by the stinking dwarves. Their heads will be set upon the hold as decoration, and their children will be thrown off the highest place we can find. Oh, God. Our people will feast in that hold in honor of the fallen scouts. A first defeat is always sour, but the revenge and a first victory will be the sweetest ever tasted. To arms. 100 crowns deciphering their books at least 50 admin power and we have all advisors employed during the repair of the hold which we haven't done yet we found plenty of new rooms we hadn't discovered during our ransacking the overseers of the construction only got the news after spotting hundreds of workers running off to their homes with lots of valuables from said rooms however when the overseers were investigating these new rooms only books and scarp scarps remain scraps i'm assuming remained. Some of the more intelligent goblins thought these books might provide more knowledge about the strange weapons and technology the dwarves use and used to use. Sadly, we couldn't read them yet. After a bit of investment in time, we figured out how to read a particular type of book, the one that spoke of the lands outside the mountain ruled by men and elves. We were immediately enthusiastic about these books, especially the structures of government mentioned within them. Although they may be far away, we could very well try to copy these governments to rule our nation much more effectively. Oh, we just, oh, we get 100 support for Renaissance for 50 Abin points. I don't know if that's worth it. I don't know, man. You know, this doesn't really seem like a great trade for me. It just seems kind of, seems kind of bad. <laughs> uh, okay. And then beneath our homes, Airnet Beer is at least 40 development. We're going to hold off on that until Tech 5. Yeah. We're going to hold off on that mission until we can dig. Diggy, diggy hole. All right, let's check out our expedition here. It's gold and short. Damn. Okay. Okay. I didn't, I didn't want any loot anyways. Uh, we can raise morale up. Honestly, once. And we'll organize them once. We might not get much loot, but it's fine. I'm not going to promise them anything. Uh, what's the plan for ideas? I mean, is there any other idea group with infrastructure that you take in the Serpent Spine? Like, is there literally anything else you want to take? Uh, every time I, I watch Flurry's VODs, because he streams in like the middle of the night for me, uh, and he always dunks on infrastructure ideas, I'm like, that man has never played in the Serpent Spine. He doesn't know. He does not know. He lacks critical information. Also, if I hadn't taken Tech 4, I probably could have rivaled Spider Wretch. Do I want to go vassalize him? I kind of do. Yeah, let's go vassalize him. Use force migration, CB? Uh, we don't have that. Because we're not a migrating person. Pew. All right, easy enough. Hey, bud. Cobwebs? 
In the tunnel ahead, a particularly bendy and tight passage through the under rock of our soldiers came upon what at first seemed to be cobwebs. Thin white strands laced the walls and blocked the path forward. Upon some initial inspection, the material turned out to be extremely easy to break. This made it many reluctant to just walk through, waiting for the expedition leader's assessment of the situation. Three days later, everyone was coughing all of a sudden. Awful and disgusting coughs, trouble swallowing, and hideous swelling on hands and arms. Exhaustion plagued the expedition, slowing it down tremendously. From one day to the other, the entire party slowed to a grinding halt. Field medics and clerics were working full time to tend to the sick while still trying to figure out what had happened. After the first people died from what seemed to be asphyxiation, the Surgeon General decided enough was enough. If they don't know what was going on, then there could be no help. Cut them open. This proved to be a very controversial decision, but most acknowledged it had to be done. The medics disappeared into a tent with some corpses and began their work. Soon they had discovered what the problem was. The presumed cause of death was indeed asphyxiation, but it was induced by significant scarring of lung tissue through stiff white fibers lodged within. Maybe those weren't cobwebs. Damn, it's like I'm back in high school again. <laughs> Get asbestos, bozo. <laughs> I asbestos your lungs. I don't, I don't like this guy. Like, I could build up to beat him, sure, but I'd just rather not fight him. Straight up. Straight up. Would rather just not fight him. Way back in high school because you learned about asbestos? Yeah. Yeah, because I learned about it. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's, that's why. No. It's because I breathed it. <laughs> Not a lot of it, but like there was definitely, well, there's asbestos in the walls. I get a conquistador with 50 tradition because Brack has been fascinated by tales of faraway places. Like, you know, the next cave over. Uh, yeah, I repay them in full and send them back out. Kind of a disappointing first expedition, but hey, it's whatever. Do I really think I could pull off a vassalization of these guys? I mean, I have tech four. I'm just built different. But if I'm not built different, if I'm not built different, this is going to go very poorly. Ooh, I'm sure we'll be fine. I'm sure we'll be fine. Please don't ruin my prosperity and my capital. Please. Oh, he's just, he's just gonna devastate my gold province. Okay. Hey! Hey! Can you all leave me alone? Why are all these OPMs just deciding that now is the perfect time to say hello to Poe Mew? Look, you're all big fans. I get it, okay? But like, come on. Give me a break. Hey, at least he's someone we can conquer. Okay, you are a vassal. What do you mean, no? We have to bait him to walk back onto his capital. Our heir is Craven. I mean, that's not great, but he has really good cloth. Ooh, cloth. <laughs> really good cloth, guys. Our heir just makes really good cloth. No, he has really good stats, so he will be allowed to live. Wait, or was that our leader? No, it was our heir. Okay. Okay, let's sprint over here. Uh, we can take Miltech 5. Does give us unbalanced research, but I don't care. And while we still have the advantage, we're going to press forward into the Mithril Arm Cartel. We're going to conquer them. Oh, that's another expedition. <laughs> oh, he's trapped. <laughs> Bozos. How did he get here then? Hold on. <laughs> did we just let him walk past? Did they just let him walk past? So many questions. Yeah, that's a that's a fourteen forty four for uh, 
or good old mithril arm cartel. <clears throat> I'm just gonna go ahead and scudge them after we're out of this war. I don't really need Spider Wretch and True Dagger to join me, but I do want their money. It's pretty, pretty important to me. Not because I'm greedy or anything, but just because it's you know it's what's right in the world. Uh, go ahead and turn the Encouraged Development Edict on again. And make sure that we get rid of the Devastation in the Gold Province. Okay, we take that. Take money. Thank you very much. Pour that up. Now we wait to see where the Rebels pop up. If he had any. I probably should have checked. Uh, I don't know. I think they're all dead. I think they're all dead. The Royal Cartel spawns somewhere inside the Serpent and sometimes rather unluckily. Yeah. Mm hmm. Luck of the draw. More opium is more clay to claim. Yeah, but like, you know. That also means I have to like fight them. Yeah, I want to scout some. Thank you. We get from 0 0.07 to 0 0.11. Huge. Massive, actually. Improve with our subjects. Phil Kuchin, 88. Thank you for the prime sub. Appreciate it. Very kind of you. Uh, how was my day? Uh, fine. Has been a very long day. Yeah. I was just preparing some stuff and some things and doing some stuff and some things. Uh, the Shaft of Bigui. Now that is some loot. Stuff and some things that I'm not going to talk about yet, but we'll talk about soon. <laughs> a cheaper natural scientist? I mean, we can't afford them right now, but maybe in the future. Alright, so let's send 10,000 men. We can prepare some supplies. This time we will set a party share. Uh, so, so third, three, four, 400? 400 is a little on the low side, but that's what I'm gonna go with. We can raise morale. It's long, so I'm kind of tempted to max out morale. No, I did not wake up three minutes before stream. Thank you very much. Been up for a while. Ooh, 8.5. Surely that will be fine. Well. <laughs> it's only gold danger level. I'm sure it'll be fine. Shaft of Bugui cannot be an innuendo. There's so many of these. There's something called Massive Shaft and Giant Chasm next to each other. Okay, come on. Come on. We all know what they mean. All right, government reforms. Learning by doing is so good. It's so good. For government reform after building a market, temple, or courthouse. But we're, we have to go for tribal assimilation for the plus 20 global settler increase. It would be stupid not to do that with how much we need to colonize. But man, the other one's good. We'll probably switch over to it once we're done with our initial colonization stuff. Uh, webs on the walls. The first thing the scouts noticed were the nets. Sticky patches of glistening white strings started lining the halls left and right. The strings vibrate when they touch anything, sending waves deep into the dark. There was no denying. A nest of spiders must be near, and big ones from the look of it. And deep in its heart, there might be treasures they have taken there cocooned into their slippery silk. A small force could retrieve such trinkets and scout ahead, looking for a way through. On the other hand, there is a small crevice that might lead around the whole affair. Send scouts. As expected, the spiders tucked some golden gems away from the prying eyes of fortune seekers, but courage prevailed in the face of danger, and our scouts returned with troves of treasure. Curiously, they saw no trace of the silk weavers, just empty halls lined with webs. Bum, bum, bum. 
Why would spiders want gold? Uh, to pay rent? What do you mean? Duh. I had no idea what massive shack next to gaping chasm. It's not gaping chasm. It's huge chasm or something like that. It's not gaping chasm. It's different. It's different, okay? They have different connotations. And we have minus one depot wrap. Well, I mean, that's not a problem at all, actually. Okay. Uh, <laughs> 654 is in charge now. That does mean we lose plus 20 settlers, which is sad. Now, which one of these do we want to go for? We're not going to develop for a while. So I think we go for production efficiency. That will make us the most money. Yeah. Vortzo Lismo. Hmm. Uh, Lord Fire, as the god of fire furnaces and industry, he is the protector of smiths and miners who supply them with their material. It is said that he managed to trick Kruzmuta Zemna into allowing those who plundered the earth, her realm, into the good parts of the afterlife. This makes her commonly venerated among cave goblin miners. Okay. Uh, is the air that bad? He's pretty bad. The question is, is he bad enough for it to matter? As in, are we going to flip to a republic before he takes power? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. We do have a cheaper two production efficiency. We can't afford them, though. Bugbears? Uh, goblinoids are no uncommon sight in the serpent spine with all the goblins and such. But there are some rare sights that are rather unexpected, such as bugbears, hulking, furry menaces which stand at the top of the goblinoid hierarchy. They enslave other goblins, raid, plunder, feast, and lie. A band of such creatures, clad in crude armor and armed with spike clubs and maces, has been on collision course with us for the past few hours, as our scouts report. Quickly, the expedition leader assembles a small council to debate how to approach this threat. As further reports come in, the situation becomes clear, but also more dire. There is a surprising amount of them, and they have an entourage of goblins as well. well let's talk to them. Bearing responsibility. Sitting across a makeshift table that was really just a convenient boulder on the other side of the hallway, our expedition leader and what seems to be the biggest, furriest, loudest, and strongest bugbear began negotiations. Our leader laid out some options for a peaceful coexistence, which the bugbear considered, giving some input on his side. After a few minutes of intense back and forth, the chief and expedition leader came to an agreement. The bugbears would settle the surrounding vicinity, claiming it for us, and in exchange, they would be mostly left alone and could keep their slaves. All in all, an agreeable result. All right. Bugbears are strong. Their tribe is sure to make good workers after we secure the area. We gain point five morale. Woohoo! Morale! Hey, it's local carp. How much have you missed? Uh, we have vassalized True Dagger. We have vassalized Spider Wretch. We have killed the Ruby Company. And we killed the Mithril Arm Cartel. And other than that, nothing. We've been chilling. We've been chilling. We haven't even taken Admin Tech yet. Let me take my administrative tech. Is there any reason to wait to take it longer? No. There's not. Let's buy down our corruption a bit more. Yeah. Uh, Deep Rothe. The Rothe is an egg... Curious creature, living both in light above and dark below. They are excellent animals, they are strong, their meat is tender, and their disposition is agreeable. It is therefore no wonder that the serpent spine once housed many of these beasts. Nowadays, most are imported from the surface, but some of them manage to survive the tunnels and caves on their own. A herd of these are just ahead, their fur long and tangled, their horns spiraling along their heads. They would make an excellent addition to our diet, but who knows what strength they possess. Ah, we eat them. We win these. Victory of the Cleaver. The Rothay posed no problem for our weapons. The docile beast didn't know it was upon them until it was too late. They were slow and sluggish, fattened by their serpent bloom that grows in these caves. Soon, the entire herd lay victim to our cook's cleaver, so that the expedition may now enjoy a fresh meal again. Only one front screen got the mithril hold, too. Uh, hypothetically, yeah. We're definitely going to need to have a lot of troops for that, though. Definitely going to need a lot of troops. Uh, faint dust trickled down the cave ceiling, building small piles like stalactites. 
Upon further inspection, the rocky pillars securing the roof appeared to have cracks that run deep into the stone. A debate sparks whether this cave should be traversed or not, but it was already too late. The ceiling gave way to the pressure building up, sending an avalanche of rocks and boulders down towards the expedition, killing and entombing many members within moments. All right. Uh, so, I now need to uninfest the hold. So stop drilling. And I haven't uncovered this yet, so I can't actually colonize there. So I guess we colonize here. Okay, so many things. So, so the five million things just popped up. Gold rush, 106 crowns. Thank you. Dragonites. A scout returns from a routine inspection with some interesting and rather surprising news. Just ahead is a cave filled with moss, upon which a group of kobolds is feasting. These little dragon-like creatures are an unusual, though not uncommon, sight in the serpent's spine ever since the death of their dragon god, which led to the scattering of his kobold and human servants. These particular individuals don't seem to be soldiers, as they are peacefully minding their own business. We'll give them some food. It's a trap! Those damn kobolds! The peaceful demeanor of the kobolds was a facade put in place to lure us towards them. Once our expedition came close, they jumped up and laughed, pulling and pushing ropes and rocks leading to a cave-in next to us. From the newly formed crevice emerged an entire horde of kobolds with weapons armed to the teeth. This force surprised the already startled soldiers as they descended upon us, slaughtering those in their way and stealing from those close by. Those damn kobolds. Uh, ancestral claims. I'm going to read this one time. The reclamation of the Dwarf Ard by the Dwarves has been a goal for thousands of years, but it was nothing more than a remote dream until the Green Tide brought the overwhelming majority of the Orcs and Goblins out of the mountains. Into the power vacuum left behind flowed the Reclaimers. Remnant holds and adventurers from the surface alike struck out to retake their ancestral halls. But for all the Dwarven claims to rightful ownership, the Goblins and Orcs have inhabited the roads and holds of the mountains in the Dwarves' absence, and have no lack of a claim to homeland. As such, conflicting claims over various pieces of land has been a constant crisis since the reclamation of the Dwarvar. Now, in Shaft of Begui, such claims are threatening to boil over into open conflict. Two different clans are asserting they are the rightful owners of valuable land, rich in minerals and containing many old structures that date to the time of all Dwarav. Both are refusing to yield in their rights of property and have brought dozens of pieces of documentation and oral testimony to courts to back their claims. As the court case rages, tensions rise, and the risk of angry words turning into blows rises. Knowing the, matters must to, knowing the matters to be sensitive, the courts have turned to the central government and asked us to resolve the matter, as they do not seem to have a ready answer to the question. I don't want to lose development, but I certainly don't want to lose government reform progress. That's a big no-no. And yes, I do have a... Conquistador, you are correct. Okay. The Mithril Arm Mine. Plus one local goods produced. Area has a known vein of Mithril. Then why is it showing me cows? Not to be ungrateful or anything. But that's a cow, dog. Oh, it's no longer a cow. Okay. Never mind. Uh, out of the dark corners and caverns of Valormount they come. Bugbears with matted fur and frenzy in their eyes, attacking all in their path. Already several outlying settlements have been put to the torch and colonists have been carried off. As luck would have it, one of the prisoners has escaped and tells us she can lead us back to the Bugbears' hideout. We can send a company of soldiers to dispatch them and free the colonists. On the other hand, Bugbears attack indiscriminately. By bribing and cajoling the leaders out of the band, they may leave our goblin sellers alone and turn their savage axes on the natives of Valormount. Uh, yeah, I'd rather just do that. Diplotech time? Is there any reason I can think of to not take Diplotech? Nope, can't think of any. And our general is dead. Alright, who wants to be a goblin general? I need someone who's going to drill for me. Why are you waiting to just deck them? You bring up a good point. You bring up a good point. You know what? It's only fitting our resident Gabo is the first gen. Oh, okay. Three siege. Yeah, sure. I won't complain about three siege pips. 
<laughs> so we're gonna wait till we have tech six. I think that's reasonable. I think it's a reasonable thing to wait for tech six. I have no interest in uh, quite running face first into that. It's a lot of it's a lot of gabos. It's a lot of gabos. But they have mithril. <laughs> they have my mithril. A uh, great cavern opens up in front of the expedition leader. Small streams of water trickling down the natural stairs carved out by long past tectonic activity. After a few steps down, the water converges to a lake surrounded by greater than life mushrooms. Their stalks glow violet and the caps extrude a dizzying smell, but not necessarily in a bad way. At their feet are more colonies of smaller mushrooms. Take it with us, we need the food. And they were edible. Woohoo! Just hire mercs. Yeah, let me just hire 6,000 mercenaries for nothing. I don't need the mercs, I just need to be tech six. Tech six, and then we should be good. <laughs> Mushroom! Mushroom! Right, there we go. There's tech six. We can upgrade our cav. <laughs> whoop de doo All of the cav that we definitely own. All the cav that we definitely for sure own. Check the good chance in your colony. It better be mithril. Yeah, 97.8%. If it's not Mithril, I'm be pissed. DRG stream. Oh, I thought I had escaped. I thought I had escaped. I thought I had escaped the DRG. I thought it'd be let go. I thought you guys would just forget. I thought you'd forget about such things. I thought I was free. Ah. <sighs> Put me on the siege. Oh. Uh, this guy is so dead. We are so very lucky there's only a thousand troops there. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> that would not have gone well if there was more than that. Uh, Fort and Verkoznad. Yes. But I need to make sure it's not infested first. Which means we need to go down there and fight some dudes, but we want to do this first. Okay, we will full... Actually, hold on. I want to check and see if this is a colony. It is a colony. And I don't necessarily want it. Vassal time? Yeah, that is probably the, the best bet. I don't want that. Go up your claims in me. And the rivalry to give me prestige. Oh, you're saying that I should just vassalize them wholesale. Just full send? Yeah, I don't need to own it for a while. Yeah, we can do that. We're now over our Diplo relations. But if one of these little guys decides to come back next to us, we can start to integrate them, maybe. I'm not happy about that one. I'm not happy. I I, I, I got nothing on that. Why? They, they abandoned their colony to then move. That's crazy.
They don't get to exist anymore. I've hereby revoked their existence rights. No more allowed. No more allowed. You need to make your way back here. Uh, hey, Costlord. They just bamboozled you? Yeah, that's what they do. Vassal, yeah, we have to wait till we can integrate them. All right, uh, let's clear the infested hold. Work with Koznan. Oh, yeah. Whoa, we got Mithril. Whoa, Mithril. Man, who would have who would have thought we'd get Mithril in the Mithril province? Okay, you're gonna get up there. You're gonna go here, and we can finally complete. Never mind. We have to f we have to restore the hold first. Can I expand the infrastructure here at all? Yes, I can. One time. Start hold restoration. Of Rokko Eight point eight years, four hundred seventy eight crowns. Do it. Do it. And you can start drilling. And I took a bunch of loans because my very smart self, very smart. Some people say I'm actually the smartest person alive. Uh, didn't look to see how much it cost. Uh, colony of mushroom people. Mushrooms and fungi are a common sight in the serpent spine, and they make up a significant part of any dark dweller's diet. So much so that there are entire manuals and archives full of the properties of the different mushrooms one can find in the depths. It is to no one's surprise, then, that mushrooms are also an integral part of any expedition team exploring the secrets of the old caverns, given the sheer number of mushrooms that can be found there. As a few explorers were picking some of these mushrooms from an easily accessible place, the most peculiar thing happened. From the dark emerged a group of strange, roughly humanoid shapes with wide-brimmed hats. As they came closer, it became apparent that these were some kind of living mushrooms, mushrooms of similar species that we were just picking. They must be some fun guys. A good trip with the mushrooms. Despite the damp, spongy look of the mushroom caps, they felt more like velvet, at least according to the group of soldiers returning from their gathering tour. Many of them just couldn't help themselves except to give these strange creatures some pets, which they, in turn, seemed to appreciate. Nevertheless, the soldiers seem to be much more upbeat now that they've interacted with these things. Gain one morale. They're fun people. Mushroom. Do we not have dwarves on the hold? Yeah, that is kind of unfortunate, but... Oh well. The Bat Cave. Look out! Cried one of the scouts above us! He pointed up to the ceiling where a huge group of large bats hung from the rocky surface, their eyes blinking in the unsteady light of the torches. Roused like that, they descended upon the group, biting and tearing on the flesh of the soldiers. Wild failing without any form of coordination ensued, panic spreading among the expedition. Discipline and decorum. Despite the desperate and panicked cries of the soldiers, many of many others managed to keep at least somewhat calm and focused, enough that they managed to organize in coordinated defense, slowly driving the bats away into the caverns and crevices from whence they came. Slowly but surely, even the most annoying and resisting bats were beaten and removed from the soldiers they had latched onto. Gain 0.5 morale, lose 50 soldiers. This is bat country. We can't stay here. True. True. It belongs to the bats. Belongs to the bats. It's not for us. Uh, military ideas. Cool. Get that national tax guy back. Yeah, that'll work. Um, sure. Oh, I've also lost the stability. I need to take admin tech. In fact, I think we should probably stop focusing mill. Yeah, I'm not going to focus admin, but I do want to stop focusing mill. Uh, webs on the walls. Yep, we read that one. And... We do, in fact, have orcs in Mithril Hold, and they're already accepted, too. Sorry, coexisting. They're coexisting. It's different. We're going to lower autonomy here. And... I didn't read that one. We were attacked by a Gru, a creature of the darkness and the shadows. Some parts of the surface spine are dark. Extremely dark. Uh, something like that. 
Keep those torches lit. Okay, we got attacked by a shadow demon thing. Disinherit air. So serpent spined. <laughs> like, I see the event and I already know what it says. So in my brain, I'm like, all right, yeah, cool, move on. But I should read them. Didn't read event 1444. <laughs> Starts only events by memory. I mean, after playing probably over a hundred hours at least inside the Serpent Spine alone, yeah, I better have them like memorized, or at least know what they're saying. Hey, whenever we play dwarves, we get so many events for half price goblin advisors. Where are those events now? Uh, Eyes in the dark. Over the past few sunless days. Uh, deep in the Dwarvar, a strange looming eye has followed us. A seasoned bestiaris has identified the strange creature to be a Nothic. A mage who searched for the arcane has led them to a terrible curse that reduces them to nothing but a shadow, a husk of their former self. Now a guard, an explorer, and a mage stand before the expedition leader to debate what should be done. Uh, leave it alone. The Nothic continued to stalk our expedition for some time, and it still haunts the sleepless nights of some of our men. The first night, when the eye was not seen at all, merited a tenuous, straining watch, filled with gruesome thoughts of where the creature might be hiding now. As the days passed, however, we concluded that it was not in hiding, but simply left us behind. Whether it has learned our secrets or just lost interest, no one can say. Finally, our dreams will be ours again. 0.5 morale, 5% organization. Yeah, I, d I did see that we're very low on the old manpower there. Would be a bad idea to send a conquistador on a trip to get access to a second trade. Most of the time, General Froyo has already died. Average goblin leadership. In almost every other circumstance, I would say, yeah, it is a waste. But considering that we have so much manpower, it's probably fine. He didn't die? Oh, did he retire to become an administrator? Is that what you're about to tell me? Retired man's in his new hole. There you go. Yeah, look at that. I'm so smart. I mean, obviously, I'd like to go and take Almdir sooner rather than later. Uh, what does our mission tree have us go? Okay, we need to own all provinces in the rail yard exchange. So let's focus there. Uh, clouded eye. No, dude. This is why Marhold gets to go into the Dwarvar so easily. Oh, the expedition returns. Huge. They actually lived. 208 of each monarch point and 625 ducats. And Shaft of Bagui gets Bugbear Tribe, which gives us 0.15 goods produced on this livestock province. Huge. For a second, I thought it was up here. But no, it's here in the livestock. <laughs> it didn't even it didn't even actually give us the troop back <laughs> we were so low on manpower it's like no should have chosen the manpower one all right we can repair mithridum uh we're going to expand administration here and let's go ahead and repair it was that 180 left oh my god Damn, you tell me it's not going to give me a free, free troops? Come on. Come on. Hey, I'm loving our expedition layout here. We have a lot in the area. Which is nice to see. Very, very nice to see. Uh, I could take Miltech early. I don't. Actually, I do need to take it early. I need as much inno as I can get my greedy little goblin hands on. I have a mission for five expeditions? As in, like, I've done five expeditions? Or... I have five in my country. Three. I have to complete three expeditions. And for five years, I get minus 10% mil tech cost and 5% infantry combat ability and 500 crowns. Dang. Okay. 
Well, we have to take this anyways for our mission. We have to colonize it, so that'll work. That'll work for me. Yeah, True Dagger, I will Royal Marry you. Spider Wretch, let's go ahead and annex you. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Wait. No. We could just let them migrate back and forth until they get a really good trade good, and then we annex them. Yeah? Big brain. Big brain plays. Oh, thank God. My stability. Orcish minorities immigrate elsewhere. Nope. <laughs> Your ass is staying where they are. <laughs> You're not going anywhere. You are staying in Mithridum. Sorry. <laughs> we'll get your tolerance back up later. Good let them stay as a vassal. Boo. Boo. Why do I want to let them stay as a vassal? You get free entry once you form all clan? Uh, that's a pretty good reason, actually. Uh, minority districts. In the province of Shaft of Begui, there has recently been a dramatic increase in racial segregation, a combination of deliberate city planning measures by our administrators and unwelcoming attitudes from the population have forced the region's minorities into rundown neighborhoods that are overpopulated and unsanitary. The suffering in these ghettos consigned to the remote corners of the hold is immense, but it is also easy to miss. Sticking to the prosperous parts of the city, one might never know that there are such terrible areas in the town. We could ensure that infrastructure extends to those neighborhoods and force changes in some of the more xenophobic administrators, but such an operation would surely be unpopular. Yeah, we'll fix it. Plus, you need to colonize all the Western Serpents. Fine, that's true, and they could help me do that. Uh, yeah, we'll take the Miltech. So-called free thinkers. Maybe I should have focused admin here. We do have a cheaper production efficiency guy that'll help us colonize faster and get more admin points faster, so let's do that. Uh, Robber's Hideaway is about to have rebels. So we'll stay there. I need another... Alright, Beeped Man, you're up. Let's see what you've got. Let's see what you've got. Here we go. Huge, massive, sick shock general. Well, you have seven pips. That's a close to six shock, I guess. Check new trade good. New trade good of what? Of who? Of them? I'd have to have a border. So I think we are just going to let them. I, I think it's a good idea to just leave them alone. Let them vibe. That is one more pip than I asked for. That's true. That's true. They, they technically, that is... Man, we are we definitely want to go Republic. I can't complain though. I can't complain. I can't complain. We had really good airs in uh, the Elysium run, so now we, we have to pay penance, and that is goblins. Very, very bad goblins. <laughs> can't read so you know you asked for shock. I can't read. So that's fine. But also, I did ask for six shock. I didn't ask for anything else. I did just say six shock. So technically speaking, it's correct. Why do you have devastation? I don't know. Uh, I'm going to build a fort in the underlayer. I'm going to build a fort in my capital. Just kidding. Gonna build a temple in my capital first. Then I will build a fort. You are going to get enforced religious unity and I'm gonna convert you. Get converted. <sighs> okay. 
We still, I mean, I can send a dude here to collect. It won't make me much. It makes literally 0 0.02. But hey, that's 0 0.02 more than I was making. So think about that. Also, it looks like the kobolds died. So dark scale is dead. Uh, the goblins are still alive in the caves and the orcs took the hold. It's what it is. And there's our first idea group. Okay. I just... <sighs> I feel like it'd be foolish not to take infrastructure ideas. Like... But Inno Ideas is good for... For us, but we don't necessarily need it yet. But like... Court Ideas? Court ideas? Why court ideas? What does that do? Expansion for one colonist? That is another option. You want me to take a whole idea group for reform progress? I don't know, dog. I mean, they, yeah, we are going to be pretty far behind on our reforms. What's this policy with infrastructure? It's trash. Minus point one year the corruption, plus 10 max absolutism. That's... That's nothing. That's literally nothing. With plutocratic, though, it does give 25% more reform progress growth. <sighs> Fine. You know what? Fine. We'll do something different. We'll pick court ideas. But, like, man. Not like. Oh. Never mind. I love court ideas. Power injection from insults. And two inno. All right, there we go. We have fixed Verkul Kozanad. More issues have arisen now that all the dwarves have been taken care of. When we ransacked the dwarven hold, most of the existing hold was broken down or destroyed by our armies, stampeding rampage and many fallen dwarves' bodies rot on the floor. Our clan boss ordered us to clean up the mess and make the place habitable for goblins. Work has already started, but this project is going to cost us. Lose 100 crowns, and we start the construction of a castle for 0% of the cost, 100% of the time. And I only need three caverns that have workshops. So, yeah, we do need the next admin tech. You know, bro, we might go in a second. We'll see. I don't know. Ooh, we can deepen the capital. 87 crowns in 8.7 years. No. First, beneath our homes. There seem to be loud metallic noises, lots of smoke, and the sound of grinding from below the old hold of Air Navir. Sounds like these scare us, but also pique our interest. Could it provide use for our military? Maybe our economy? We must find out. Several expeditions deeper were successful, so going should not be a problem. We just need to hope the expedition teams don't keep everything again. Those silly goblins. Looking for the source for 10 years, minus 10% construction cost, minus 10% local development costs. Boom. 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 Uh, it'll just Amanar because you swim mana and innovativeness. Innovativeness. But more more mana is good. You can never have too many monarch points. You just keep developing, right? God, I hope the orcs do well and I don't have to do with Marhold. God, I hope they do well. Monetary reforms? I'm not losing a stability. Uh, Miner distinguishes themselves. While the deepening operation continues, our hold, a local miner has garnered recognition as an exceptionally skilled individual. I can get a cheaper natural scientist, or we can do 10% construction progress. How old's our current one? He's 50. He's going to die soon. But let's diggy diggy hole. Keep developing. Sunrise Empire heard that? No, please. Never again. Never again. 
Uh, Orcish clan courts. One of our counselors traveling through Mithridum has stumbled upon a peculiar practice amongst Orcish population. Apparently, orcs were meeting out law and justice in what they called clan court hearings to deal with conflicts in their community. It may be detrimental to let them continue their brand of justice that exists outside of the purview of our lawmakers, but at the same time, the practice is limited within their own tight-knit communities and does not seem to be harming anyone outside of it. Yeah, sure. Moderate them. It's still going down. We should probably get our crown land up high. But then again, Celsius. I do love me some Celsius. Do love me some Celsius. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Lazy diplomats, what do you want them to do? I mean, I, I guess I can build a spy network here. But I'm not close to going to war with them. Look at that. I don't even have a lazy colonist. Don't 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 even try. Don't even try and be a like, lazy colonist. No. I already moved it. Okay? I already moved it. It doesn't count. Merchant's proposal. A merchant from our hold has come to us with a proposal. They wish to focus the resources of the hold's traders on helping the digging efforts. It would hamper their ability to barter in the short term, but a more magnificent hold would bring in more money. Yep, absolutely. 5% construction progress. Uh, we are at 34%. Get that insult from power projection. Okay. Well, I don't have a rival, so I can't. It's going to be a strong shattered crown. No lazy colonists. Uh, love that we get the agate gem decision as the gabos. Do we actually? We have to discover Amicost. The owner has to like us. We need prestige and money. And we can't be a monstrous nation. So, yeah, technically we can. It just might be a while. All states loyalty equilibrium, 10%. The state loyalty change on privilege revoked, plus 5. I suppose that's fine. Make the monsters a little bit more loyal. Can summon the diet here? They want me to integrate my vassal. Yeah, that's just straight up not going to happen. But I'm glad that they want it to happen. I'm glad that they think I'll do that. Uh, does anyone else want to be a general? I need someone else to drill. We need to drill our troops. Get some professionalism going. Uh, Razor. You got it. Also, I... Yesterday... Yesterday, I said that everyone was going to be playing Byzantium in the new update, okay? I said that yesterday, and I backed down, and I shouldn't have backed down, okay? I shouldn't have done it, because today, I saw on uh, Zlevik's community page, he did a poll asking what people are going to play in uh, the update, and guess what? 49% of people are going to play Byzantium. Y'all have issues, Okay. Get some better content. Get some better interests. There's more out there than Byzantium. It's okay. You can do other things. Uh, courthouse is both getting to high crown land and dealing with low crown land situation. Is that true? Uh, I mean, kind of, but not really. We do get plus two monthly splendor, which is nice. Granada better than Byzantium anyways. That's, that's fair. Playing Sunni biz is funny though, but like, there's there's other parts of history that are just more interesting. I don't know what to tell you. Then all kinds of stupid, difficult, interesting things that you force on the biz problem is just fun. But like, biz isn't that hard. Like, sure, when you're just starting out playing for the first time, yeah, biz is a difficult run. But after that, like, there are more difficult things out there. You know, like Manipur. There's even an achievement tied to it. That's a more difficult start. Have fun having literally everybody hate you. Uh, cavern, base production of three, a workshop. Well, clearly... We want this one to be at three, right?
Yeah. A workshop worth 1.3 ducats sounds pretty good. Then we can do the copper. And then we'll probably just have to do the serpent's bloom. Because I can't build it on gold. Uh, it's not okay. Business on playable in this update. It's don't make fun or restart and restart for the good start. I, I really like. I know that like yeah. That, oh god, that's a lot of inflation. Uh, orcish ambushers. Sure, we need to increase our tolerance of orcs. So, those. like they're not gonna make biz too hard to play. You don't have to worry about it. They're not gonna do that. They're not. They're not going to do that. Every fungi came with ten production down with a workshop. The UK had the Grand Sultan of Byzantium leading the march on Rome with Sultan Alexandros Pelagios isn't baller. I mean, like, uh, sure, it's funny, it's funny, but like, uh, I don't know. My favorite games was Batua. Ooh, interesting. A Batua game? I don't know if I ever played Batua. No, no, I definitely have, because I have the achievement. That's the... That's what's their face's vassal, right? Next to Kilwa? Mm, I can't remember their name. Uh, welcoming ceremonies. You did prestige plus one. And the rail tithe. Utapa. Yes, thank you, Utapa. Uh, rail tithe. The rails of the Dorobar have been our clan's home for as far as our histories tell. But with Dukinson enslaving many goblin clans and emptying the Dorobar of orcs, an opportunity arose to conquer Airnat Veer, the heart of the rail network which we call home. The cost was paid with the rail tithe, a system where we extorted or forced any goblin clan or small enough orcish warband that wanted to move over the railways to give over a portion of their wealth and slaves. In time, the system allowed us to build the forces necessary to take the heart of the rails that we now call home. Minus 10% regiment cost. You get plus one goods produced in every fungi cave that fulfills? That's nuts. Uh, we don't need to take Miltech that early. Yeah, so we'll do a little bit of development there to make sure that we can get that to three. We can encourage development here for the same thing. Right? And then here we can do the same thing. So now that's good to be developed. Uh, that does mean that we should... We should probably stop taking ideas for now and focus on that. <laughs> uh, remember, you can Merc Lone Star, but not with Biz. Look, they should just start. They should just start at EU four and fourteen fifty three. They should have started in 1453, and that way no one would ever play Byzantium ever again. Would have been better. Would have been better. We would have been free. Did a Mazam and a loser run once too, but it just got painful, so I never finished the Reconquista. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Because once you weaken Iberia, then France just shows up, and then you're like, damn. France is there. Everyone in Europe wants to join a coalition against you, even though, like, why? <laughs> Why would they do that? They don't really care. I don't know. France, my beloved, how dare you say such things in my presence? Like that money. Uh, we could upgrade our center of trade. Or we can get our workshops built. Probably a better idea. Internet beer has been diggy diggy hold. Congratulations to us. We dig it the hole real good. We do have increased dev cost until 91. And we wouldn't want to develop it anyways until... Next institution, probably. Uh, 1453, best year of history, but making the least Roman Rome is always funny. Okay, well then, form Rome as Prome. That's like a classic run, right? A classic run that I've never done. Never done the funny. Are you fuck? Bro, get out of my mountains. What is wrong with you? We're gonna go kill him right now. 
What in the ever-loving hell is wrong with you? Get out! Bro, Aminar developers, make it to where people in Eskin can't go into the mountains, please, for the love of God. For the love of God, make it to where they can't go in the mountains. Like, it's, just, it's so ridiculous. Isn't this supposed to be like an inhospitable place that no one wants to go to? Right? Yeah? Please? Siege ability. Already got denied. No! Damn, it was worth a shot. Uh, me and the boys forming Rome is Ching. <laughs> the true empire. The empire of all empires. Yeah, I don't give a damn what Blade Breaker thinks or wants. Or uh, You're getting out of my mountains. You're getting out of my mountains, and you're going to like it. But then he still has tribal land. Like, what in the world? It's just annoying, bro. It's just annoying. There we go. Can unlock that. We can no longer get Inno for taking Miltech, but that's okay. Uh, What I do group do we want to go now? Probably a... Mill group? Or an admin group? Do we go for infrastructure now? We have to develop Brooklyn Cozen at 25. Damn. Mm, I do need to actually dig my capital again. That's going to be super expensive. Man, I really wish the policy was better. This is a trash policy. Plus 10 max absolutism, 0.1 yearly corruption. Uh, did you watch the dev class for Amazon? I did not know. Are you talking about the one that Lambert was uh, casting? That one? I've watched Lambert's videos about his dev interviews. But I didn't, I didn't watch the whole thing. Oh no, we need to grab this court idea for the reform progress. Trade efficiency? I need to find an inflation reduction guy. Infra offensive policy is goaded. It, it is. It is very good. Policy offsets unbalanced research. You know what else offsets unbalanced research? Not having unbalanced research. Uh, we're gonna lose that colony, but I don't care. More important things are beating up the orcs. And we're just gonna we're just gonna doom stack around here. We're just gonna be as scary as possible. Yep, we'll grab that reform progress growth, and now we'll focus on taking uh, Diplotech. Right? No, doing the Diplo Dev. The Diplo Dev. Balance Tech. If you have balance research, you can debase money. Gross. Give yourself corruption on purpose? Really? Like, if you have to take corruption, like debase, that's good, but otherwise, I don't know. I don't know about all that. I don't know about all that. Let's build our buildings. And we have sacked Steel Hill. Uh, I don't have the money in my coffers to currently... Click that button. I am about to max out on mill points. We do know that we need to develop this eventually. Let's do a little bit of dev down there. Peace out for money. He won't give me max money. 15. Yeah, we're good. Go 
Are you jumping on my war? No. No, you were not. And there goes the natural scientist. Uh, we do have a tier two inflation guy. We'll have to hire him. And hopefully we get Ralcor forms very quickly. Okay, Blade Breaker, max money, war reps, break all your alliances so you die. Very good. You are super dead. Duke and Colt. Across our history, the relationship between orcs and goblins has been contentious, to say the least. Since the green tide, however, we have been less cramped up in small spaces with them and have been more able to observe them from a distance rather than be hunted and enslaved by them. In their zealous worship of Dukin, be it the old one or the new one, they are driven to extraordinary feats in battle. One group of shamans has decided it would be worth it to make some effort to keep him on our good side through rituals where goblins act like orcs so that we may achieve similar things during warfare. Wah. Wah. And that was stack wipe, so we're good. Get out of my mountains. You do not belong there. They're mine. Mine and no one else's. The temptation to click Diplo there is high, but I will not. I will not. I want the orcs to win. Also, Pelly. Well, I wanted orcs to win before they decided that they were going to cause problems. Ah, shit. What have I done? What have I done? <laughs> oh, no. Wait, 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 <laughs> wait, 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 Marhold, we can talk about this. We can talk about this, Marhold. <laughs> we can talk about this, Marhold. We can talk about this as you give me all of your money. I do not fear you. Yeah? Yeah, Marhold? Yeah? What's up? Huh? A goblin's horde. To the goblins, the kobolds were an interesting people. Like them, they stood in a hostile land surrounded by invaders who had come to retake their land. But unlike them, they were driven by a strong religious and social urge that united them all. Hoarding! This concept of eternal greed for riches was quite familiar to goblins, but the display of it in massive piles was entirely new and enticing. If goblin kind was to borrow this idea, however, they were going to do it their way not through private hordes within their homes, but through massive displays available for all to see. The shamans will accept the donations and in turn keep a running tally of everyone's hordes and guarantee bragging rights to any goblin that wishes to flaunt his wealth. Oh, Dragon Cult, yeah. How are they attack you and why? They attacked uh, Clouded Eye and then I vassalized Clouded Eye and now I'm going to obliterate Marhold and take everything they own. That is a lot of allies. That is a stupid amount of allies. I'm going to enjoy tearing you apart piece from piece by piece. Just saying. Oh, you don't even have a fort here? Oh, you poor dummy. Uh, I have the wrong general on this guy. Take Marhold? Oh, I fully intend to take everything here. Just remember, Marhold, you did this. Avatars! Of the many people we allied or subjugated, one follows a faith from the West, which follows, th believes the gods don't interfere directly in the mortal plane, but instead use avatars to ex execute their will in the world. Despite these people clearly not understanding theology, as everyone can see their dame and Castellos are but aspects of our moon goddess, some of our people have begun to take over this idea. Well, that would explain why nobody sees the gods. Of course, you know, I don't know why we would have a moon goddess since we live underground, but hey. Who am I to judge? All right. Uh, we'll switch all of this over to Clouded Eye. Clouded Eye can core it for me. 
Make sure you have a general of some kind. I it still it chose the wrong general, which is kind of impressive. It's kind of impressive. Won't lie. I don't know if we'll be able to take everything here, but we will be able to take a large chunk of it. We seem to peace out within the next two years. Actually, I don't know if we'll get vision. Do we get vision everywhere? Also, we can send that back and we can start to colonize it again. We can take Miltech. There goes Marhold. Huh. Right. Right. I have to take it. Because they have the the debuff. They have the debuff for being in Eskin, where you can't take a bunch of land. But I don't. Because I'm built different. Wow, we can't full annex. We can't full annex. That's okay. There we go. And I kind of want to give Clouded Eye all the land, though. I don't really want to core it. Yeah, I, I don't want to core it. It's, it's outside. Bleh. Gross. Sunlight. Moonlight. It rains. It's bad. I don't want it. Not interested. Not interested. There we go. Okay. Now we can actually start to core everything up. Keep hold? No. No. I'm not going to keep Marhold. Marhold hold is not worth keeping. Okay. I've got other things that I can dig and do. We're playing inside the Serpent Spine. We're in the Serpent Spine. We do Serpent Spine things. You fools. Uh, 0.25 global prosperity growth and my 33% state maintenance. Okay, we do need to integrate one of our little vassals now, though. We now officially have too many dudes. Too many dudes. Marhold is in the serpents by the rest of my case. What does that say? What does that say right there? Because to me, it looks like it says Eskin. Region, South, sorry, area, Marhold. Region, South Casanor. Subcontinent, Eskin. Continent, Canor. Did you start the third expedition? No. My vassal settled this. Easy way to solve that problem. We just need to improve with them. And then we'll just seize it. We'll do the same thing here. I... <sighs> I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna get into why I, I hate that with a passion. But they should put Marhold and Eskin so I can trade company all of the serpent or all of Eskin. Yeah, I'm sure they'd love for you to be able to do that. That'd be that'd be great for balance purposes. I just developed the wrong province. I love doing that. Uh, well, technically, if I throw down a workshop here, that will complete the mission. So, we'll take it. And then we can start this expedition. It's copper and medium. Estimated loot, zero. Woohoo! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Woohoo! Zero loot, let's go! Um, raise morale once. Good luck. If they die, they die. Uh, 
Uh, is there a reason George Quarantine and Marhold? I don't know if they ever said officially. I don't know. I'm about to have some mountain shark separatists stop drilling. Oil cap? Uh, yeah, sure. Gain supplies, lose organization, gain morale. Marotic Separatists. Okay, we'll go deal with those. We'll fight for his, you know, his territory here. We'll make him like us more, too. We need to get True Dagger soon. I was kind of hoping that they would, uh... Colonize. Which they, in fact, are. And they have claims on Almdir. All right, tier three. Let's go for increase the loss. Monster. No, we go for the embrace new thoughts. Lose no stab from demonstration. All right, farming in the caves. Fungi will not be produced under passage. Underpassage? Oh, here. Okay. Uh, with the second hold now repaired and our population growing rapidly, we need to increase our food production capabilities. After a meeting, we decided that mushrooms work the best in our circumstances, partially due to their positive side effects, but also due to their ease of access. So only one question was left on the table. Where? With most of the caves not producing much worth, they were decided to be the perfect place for large-scale farming. Right. Underpassage gets state-backed food security until the end of the game, and plus one goods produced. <laughs> Alright, new mushrooms. We own the Rail Yard area and the Rail Yard Exchange. With our new farming projects being such a huge success, our growing populace asks for more mushrooms by the day, and while the current increase of farms is large, it is not enough to solve the issue in its whole. Additionally, the little space we have left in caves is used for accommodation and other projects. We should explore more caves in the area and settle them so that we have that we will have plenty of room for more farms in the future. A talented explorer with a particularly interesting trait has already volunteered to lead exploration missions, so it seems we already have the perfect goblin for the job. Goodrag Rail Sniffer, a 2450. Uh, and we get an additional colonist in 25 global settler increase. For the next 25 years. Okay. Well, in that case... We colonize here. Sure. Uh, I have too many dudes. Sorry, Beeped Man, you're out. Alright. And then we have the first technocrats. Are goblins smart? Many would answer no, and our people themselves would too. But the technocratic faction in our nation seems to think otherwise. They put forward ideals that, since one man is not enough to decide on important matters, include smarter goblins in the rulership of our nation, and not just one single ruler. They assembled and put forward a message to the entire nation, calling on the smarter goblins to come and join their debates so they can implement their ideals and include a more intelligent backbone to our decision-making. For 10 years, we get plus 100% reform progress growth, and we get a tier 2 natural scientist that is 50% cheaper to employ. That's tempting, but I do kind of want to fire radical reforms. Uh, and a hold of shinies. We've discovered Mithridum. Ever since we conquered the now-named Stinky Ruby Dwarves, both our military technology and power have grown severely. We control many more caves and have uncovered lots of dwarven technology. This has driven us to seek further and further into the caves, and recently a group of scouts returned to the base with super, super, super exciting news. They found a hold full of super shiny metals. Sadly, they didn't have anything else to say about the hold because the shiny metals distracted them from anything else. Bring them home. Uh, our scouts watch in pure disbelief as they entered an unknown hold through a hidden entrance. The hold was full of a very shiny metal and many other shiny treasures could be seen in the distance. Before they could get a proper look, they heard someone coming in their direction and our scouts ran off to avoid contact. Later on, it was determined that the hold was occupied by an inferior nation. 
Our nation launched a spying mission to determine what these resources were. The natural occupants did not seem to mind a few small green folk running through the hold, almost as if they were used to it. After listening in and attempting to understand a conversation between a smith and a soldier, our spies only figured out the name of the shiny metal because the smith kept pointing at the metal and saying the word mithril. After exploring a bit more, they found what looked like a throne room, decorated with gold and other expensive materials, and also swarmed by guards. There did not seem to be any use of the older dwarves' technology, nor did the people seem all too happy in their current situation, a situation easily fixed by a good old diet of shrooms. They returned with this knowledge and some drawings of characters that seemed to be used in their language. Our nation has decided the enemy nation does not properly use their materials, and their inferiority to us in all aspects is showing. We'll march on their hold and capture it for our own usage. Permanent claim on the Mithridum area, which we already own. Heroes attack our clan boss. Well, it's been real. Adventurers, long have they been the bane of many a monstrous nation, slipping behind our borders to strike at whatever target they deem prestigious enough. Now they've committed an even more heinous offense against our people, attacking the very heart of our country, our clan boss. While we rested, a group of these fortune-seeking vagrants launched an assault against clan boss Aminkul the first, catching us unaware. Though we quickly rose to the sound of the alarm, they had already engaged him in battle. Even now, as we hasten to his side, we can hear the raging sounds of combat in the distance. Well, I suppose people did not appreciate, appreciate us taking out Marhold. Rip the Railskulker Dynasty. We'd lose anyways because eventually we go Republic. Rip our 654. That makes our ideas cheaper. Oh, he actually lived! 26% <laughs> chance! <laughs> He's a hero. He's just built different, bro. He's just built different. They simply cannot keep a good goblin down. Mm-mm. Ain't no way. Can't keep a good goblin down. Take those up, core them. Why are you being so mean? You have better Diplotech than I do. What if I paid off your debt? And placated you a bunch? Thanks. <laughs> I'm now taking your land, thank you. Uh, Treasure of Ithnir. Our chronicler has told us of a powerful dwarven sorcerer by the name of Ithnir, whose legend claims that he has hidden some of his treasure within these parts of the serpent spine. Often he tried to convince the expedition to search for the fabled riches, but often there were more pressing matters to attend to. Recently, however, following a time of few expeditionary successes, our explorers are more and more inclined to finally search for it. Scouts have been sent out into the dark to search for signs of the wondrous. Mages are turning their wands to recognize magical signatures, and our chronicler is poring over his scrolls and parchments, looking for clues to the exact location. After five days, the first scouts return, with no news of any signs of treasure. But over the course of the day, some mages pick up a trace of arcane energies leading down a vast crevice. Scouts are sent out to try and find a safe way down and up again, but there seems to be no path. One group who has reached the bottom of the crevice, obscured by darkness, by repelling down some rope, report they have found an old crest of dwarven make. Their iconography matches the time of Ithnir, and the emblem is linked to his infamous Wandsmith clan. Discussion about how to approach the matter now have ignited all over the place. Our engineers have proposed that we build, we build a hoist to get soldiers and abjurers down to search for the treasure. While some soldiers would prefer to find a way down, arguing that there could be a slope down that has been eroded out of the stone over time. At last, the safer option has been chosen, and the soldiers search for a way down. Fortunately, this path exists, and the entire expedition can descend into the canyon. It did not take the mages long to find a magically concealed wall, behind which the horde of Ithnir gleamed at us. Our soldiers ready their bags and chests when the chronicler speaks. There is, of course, the possibility that Ithnir might have cursed the horde in order to punish anyone trying to take it by force. The soldiers fall silent and look at the expedition leader. What will we do if we take it? Uh, the goal, look, the curse has abated. Whether there was ever a curse on the gold in the first place is hard to say, but there was no magical effect upon seizing the hoard. Even the most superstitious men soon agreed there was no danger to the treasure, lifting their spirits, arguing what to do with the gold. This discussion is shut down quickly by the expedition leader, who reminds them that all loot goes to the coffers to be given to the contractor. The chronicler has become a hero overnight, finally turning our luck around again. That's good, because we hadn't gotten any loot yet, so it is good. It is good. Ooh. Dwarvod 10 is turned to gold, huh? 
I like gold. No, I don't like orc warbands though. <laughs> Those I enjoy a lot less. This does not spark joy. Not one bit. Ah, execute him. I'm not gonna get it. Uh, go for the cheaper advisor. Go for the cheaper advisor. Three from the zero loot expedition. That's a three hundred percent increase. Uh, great mushrooms. Take them with us. We need the food. Damn. Turns out you shouldn't just eat random mushrooms you find, everyone. Turns out, not good for your health. Not good for your health. Uh, the warband has arrived. Are we over our force limit? No, we're good. We are good. Hey, why are you not moving? That's actually probably the best case scenario of where they could have arrived. Because now... Ooh, that's a good air. 354. Now they have to go on to uh, the underlayer thing. It does mean that we're never going to have prosperity in this state. But... Is what it is. Six guys there, you go fight. <clears throat> there we go. I don't want to lose another stability. Thank you very much. Uh, do I take infrastructure ideas here? Yes, I think so. Minus 10% construction cost. Sounds good. And complete another national idea. The heart of the rails. Air Navir is the heart of our clan, and the clan has given it an apt title of the heart of the rails as well. For it was here the ancient dwarves kept the beating heart of their rails going. The rusted wrecks of thousands of carts, which were once moved by ways we do not know, are now no more than burnt out or ruined hulks of metal. Many of the clan would love for nothing more than to repair one of these machines, only of course to make it more fitting for a goblin. For now, we'll have to make do with the slaves pulling the carts. Minus two national unrest. Man, we sure do love our interns, I guess. Uh, what else are we? Yeah, we're colonizing this. Okay, you walk back here. Orcish soldiers of fortune. I... No. We'll get a bunch of tolerance increase when we... do this. We're going to have to integrate Cloud and I. We're going to own land outside the Serpent Spine. Cringe. Dark Scale Separatists? I'm sorry, Dark Scale. Nothing personal. It's just business. Just business. Inflation go burr? <laughs> yes, it does. Shattered Crown has announced me as a rival. Isn't that interesting? Hmm. We have a strong Frozen Maw. There's also Dwarves on the other side. And so, like, we could do a show Strength War on... On these guys. They're tech 5 with 15k troops. Like, we can thrash them. Hmm. Uh, wandering Husks. Many terrors stalk the caverns of the Serpent Spine, but none are so apathetic to their own dangerousness as Wandering Husks, laden with poison. Each step, they exude wafts of poisonous gas, dispersing it into the thick air around. A group of these monsters has just crossed paths with our expedition. We cannot easily get rid of them. A concerted charge would just rile up the foes even more, their poison taking countless casualties. And then they blow up. And we die. So, so much for that plan. You need to keep in Cloud Eye Province and Service Bind and keep them as a fighting force. 
yeah, I mean, that's also an option. Uh, do I just finish this idea? Honestly, yeah. Yeah, we can. Uh, respect and authority. Minus 20% reduced max absolute impact from privileges and plus one max privileges per estate. Uh, let's just start seizing land and... Actually, do I want to sell here? It would help us build buildings and stuff. But at the same time... More reform progress, good. More reform progress, good. Full crown must be reformed. True. True. That's true. I didn't think about that. Uh, I want to upgrade the center of trade here. Because all my trade value is being stolen by people that are not on my node. Uh, okay, well, that makes the decision for me very easy. Hello. Makes my decision easier. I also need to build a fort on my capital. It's fine. Actually, it's not fine. He has his shake the earth or whatever. We can't just let him see the capital for free. What if we just hold him right there? That's fine. Dagger going kind of better. Yeah, they're doing good. They're colonizing a lot. It's good. Spider Wretch. They got the spirit. You know what? I should just snap Eskin every time I play in the Serpent Spine. That would probably make my life a lot better. I'd probably enjoy playing the Serpent Spine more. Making where people don't always take my land. Yes, you can for all clans. Shh, it's fine. It's fine. We can do it. We can do it. Surely it won't ruin everything. Door rod 12 is complete. So let's send one colonist there. And one colonist here. Oh, fuck you. Are you serious? How? How did they die? There's literally nothing to... Oh my god. That's infuriating that they died. They died in a zero loot expedition. <sighs> Ridiculous. Ridiculous. It's also ridiculous that I have to keep bouncing back and forth here. But I have no choice. I, I gotta. We get a skill question mark artist. That gives construction cost reduction. Is that true? I think it just gives it to us in general. See, he just keeps running away. You coward, get back here. Let me kill you. Die like a man. Thank you. God. Orcs these days, man. Uh, we should probably save our admin points. Humiliate war reps. Colonial expansion. Yes, please. Do that. 
They died with 640 loot and a zero loot expedition. Yes. Will you ever be loyal again? Airnet viewer gets less goods produced for 10 years. Is that really going to cost us that much money? No, I don't think it is. Don't think it is. Skill issue expedition. True. You know who would have died? Dwarves. Kobolds. Just saying. They would have lived. Just saying. My grand captain. Uh, at least we get a morale of armies guy, though. That is really bad. <laughs> that, that is really, really bad. That is, like, really bad. Okay. He still says no, though. So we're going to have to go and continue our expansions. No, get back here. He's too fast. He's too fast. Put our conquistador in charge. That we can move even faster. Come here. You can't hide forever. I will find you. Actually, he can just hide forever. He can keep running behind the fort over and over and over again. Uh, we need to take Miltech. Gonna do a bit of development there. I'm gonna lose my mind. Going to lose my mind. God damn. Trophy pile. Move it out of the way. Coral. Buy down my inflation. There we go. First step of the orcs taken care of. Going even deeper. I don't know why I haven't completed this yet. The most honest and brave goblins have assembled to embark on a mission with the intention of increasing our knowledge for military and economic goals. They will go down way further than we have ever gone and hope to learn a lot from this, especially in the military. Although the chance to survive is little, there are plenty more goblins ready to embark on a possible suicide mission for the nation. After all, far too many goblins volunteered for this expedition, so the first group are expendable. The Dagrite Railforge. The expedition was a go. A group of scouts descended into the depths of the hold to discover where the mysterious noises came from. The first days of the expedition went smoothly as they were traveling down already explored areas of the hold. As the days went on, the scouts were getting slower. Many unexplored areas had to be mapped out, and a large amount of broken down structures like pillars, houses, and statues forming blockades, which forced the scouts to figure out a way around them. After a few months of traveling, the sounds were getting very loud, and a few scouts reported seeing some light deeper down. As the scouts were crossing a bridge, a metal structure could be seen below at the bottom of the cliff. It was a massive machine on tracks, moving around and rumbling very loud. There were several stops where the machine would make a lot of noise and consume more materials. At the end of the tracks, the machine would spit out a large quantity of rail tracks, which would be dumped in a large hole. There were sounds of another machine like construction moving on the tracks coming from the hole. They finished documenting the process and investigated a bit more, discovering several empty trains in a sort of storage. We have made some drawings of them but could not reach the storage because the scouts did not find any entrance. After these findings, the scouts traveled back upwards and reported their findings. Our nation is now studying the drawings and planning on possibly recreating the trains found in the storage. I wonder what they used them for. Minus 1% prestige, okay? Still 1512. Okay. And we can take Palace of Splendor to get plus 2 monthly splendor and minus 20% estate interaction cooldown modifier. Which means I can sell seas again. Which I can do in 4 years. Okay, that's actually kind of nice. That is kind of nice. I'll not lie. Right, you need to get a regular general. 
Otherwise, you can't put rebels down, which I've never really understood why it's like that. Like, why can conquistadors not put down rebels? Like, if we're going to look at things historically, perhaps it's good they don't, but also, you know, they did. Why court? I don't know, because people want to court, and so we did something different. All right, there's level three. And... Colonialism... Hasn't spawned yet. Okay. Well, there's 50 development on our capital. 261 crowns, 15 years. All right, let's wait until we get the money for that. No, we'll just take the loans. It'll be fine. Uh, calling development boost. Just do it. We can burn tax dev somewhere. Yeah. I thought I was still taking provinces because it was their tribal land. So they'll take flooded pit too. But then that should be it. Also, we do need to do another expedition still. Poi likes to throw? <sighs> Bro. Y'all say I like to throw so much. But like, what? Why not take different? If I took naval ideas, you'd all be thrilled. Okay? You'd love it. You'd be like, yes, great choice, Poey. Great choice. Amazing choice. But I take court ideas, and you're like, no, this is the worst. How dare you do that? Come on. Come on. Uh, all goblin homes. Since our arrival in Air Navier in 1431, we have grown and expanded, becoming the largest and most organized goblin clan in the Dwarvar to our knowledge, which is quite the feat, considering the number of orc raiders and disorganized rivals. Still, it is not enough. Scouts report bands of adventuring dwarves have returned to the Dwarvar from whatever exile they have endured, likely as consequence of Dukinson emptying the serpent spine of both orcs and goblins. We must turn Air Navier into an unbreakable fortress, as no doubt there will be dwarves who will seek our home for their own. Aeronautvir must become a home for all goblins under our clan's rule, of course. Plus 20% for defense. <clears throat> Alright, so that will be done. That will be good. I do wonder if he's going to actually get like a support of independence from someone. It will be interesting to see. Perhaps I should integrate... Uh... Oh, nice. Free stab. Well, not free, but stab. Perhaps I should colonize to integrate True Dagger. But, like... No, he's not colonizing right now. Yeah, if he's not colonizing, he gets annexed. That is kind of the deal. Uh, seeking counsel from the ancestors. There are always more decisions to be made in the rule of Rail Skulker, and always many voices seeking to guide them. But the clan boss has a much better idea than listening to their advisor's disparate voices. Why not reach out to the clan's founders to be certain we are following in their footsteps? The shamans prepare a ritual at once, and the only question is what kind of spirit we should reach for. Uh, we need probably Diplo points. Ask a silver tongued goblin for clever, persuasive words. Uh, let's see like an underground lake or ocean type thing, like with Octopires surrounded by dwarves and goblins focused on semi naval tactics. It'd be weird, but fun. It would be. I don't know how you do that in EU4, but it would be very cool to actually have to have a navy in the Serpent Spine. Uh, we will start to demonstrate immediately. So, say goodbye to all of our Diplo points, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to lose all our Diplo points now, that's for sure. Uh, the monstrous tongue is varied, and for the rest of the world, extremely complicated, if not threatening or alien in some nature. As such, one of the most important steps in reaching acceptance is to learn their ways, and the best way to do that is to learn their language. Our biology may not support it, and we may sound stupid in even attempting to speak their tongue properly and eloquently, but it matters. This will take a long period of time, but we must keep trying to understand and speak their language. Uh, remember the mod you did Dakin? That one had a river from 
Almdir navigable. So you could raid Gawed as dwarves. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Uh, it's too herd. No, we will get the government reform progress and the large monstrous decrease. And our trader is dead. Long live the trader. Uh, we can get rid of our spy network on you and we can start to improve with you because we haven't been doing that and that's why they still hate me, hate me so much. Work to proposal, yes. Anything to dig faster, I will take that tech and we will actually get our new infantry. We'll go for the Pebble Slingers. Under the millennia of servitude to the orcs, many values were distilled in the cave goblins, though nearly all of these concepts vanished the moment they left captivity. A few lingering sparks of orcish pride remained in the new clans of the caverns, refusing the cowardly and complicated ambush tactics favored by their neighbors. Some cave goblins opted for a different approach to minimizing casualties. Through the widespread implementation of slings, enemies could now be defeated from a distance without the time-consuming process of crafting true weapons. Sure. We'll just throw rocks at people. It tends to get the job done. Uh, um, yeah. Slings of the Ithalus help. True, bro. True. Just ask um, Goliath. <laughs> nice. Economic boom in the West Warvar. Balanced idea group, by the way. Uh, local construction time in the entire West War of our region and cheaper dev cost or invest in the capital area. I'm going to go for the entire Dwarvar. Yeah, because we're going to develop institution in Mithridum probably. Uh, getting into the swamp. Ogres are not the most gregarious folk, and may prefer to live the quiet life on the wild corners of our realm. The hills, crags, and swamps where nobody may bother them, which, unfortunately for us, also includes tax collectors. As villages seek to expand their farmland, however, they can come into conflict with these ogres who consider these fringe areas their lands, with or without writs to support such claims. And with arable land becoming more scarce, these conflicts are growing in frequency. In the province, while draining this nearby swamp, the local peasants have run into a particularly reclusive ogre who is apparently very fond of throwing projectiles from overripe onions to live donkeys. Although this is quite anecdotal, we could take this chance to set an official policy regarding these cases. Uh, some of them may die, but this is a sacrifice that I am willing to make. Or actually, get out of their swamp and I get minus 5% dev cost. I'm not going to kill Shrek. Some villagers may die. I don't care. From the darkness. Oh yeah, no, I'm, I'm sure you want me to go and fight the freaking... <sighs> do the expedition target. I do need to go do the expedition target. We have a mission for it. We need to do it. Societal reform. Plus 15% idea cost. Uh... Yeah, fine. Not happy about it though. Not happy about it though. Let me tell you what. All right, send ten thousand troops to there. You build another ten thousand, but quickly make your way back here before they ruin the hold. And let's do another expedition. Over at 13. Organize it. Start preparation. Send manpower. 10,000 men. Set supplies. Send some equipment. Uh, the Jerkowitz, thank you for this 18 months of Prime. Really good debut. Don't call me baby girl. That's fucking weird. That's weird. Chatters be normal. Difficulty level impossible. All right. I don't know if they're actually going to live this time, but we're going to try. We're going to try. Chatter of being normal. Uh, impossible difficulty. Uh, I have a colonist. No one told me that I had a colonist available. You guys are slipping. Are we seeing Goblin Shamanism? Uh, probably. Love is love? You don't love me. You don't even know me. We got more gold? Oh, baby. 
That's more gold. I like more gold. Hey, can you please, like, you know, settle? Uh, knock the late. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. I literally do know you. Okay, yeah, but the point still stands. The point still stands. Uh, okay, yes, 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 yes. Do that. Equip you. Sure. <sighs> Shatter Crown and Omdir. Great. Great, 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 great. They're going to ruin Omdir even more because we happened to leave at the exact same time. I love Rebels. I love Rebels, dude. Oh, I love Rebels so much. We're going to placate you a bunch. That way you don't get your independence supported by someone. And I need to marry you before... Oh, incompatible biology. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. New gun reform. Tier 4. Uh, plus one land leader, fire and shock. Marines. Uh, which we can't get. Sorry. Or national manpower. I mean, obviously I just want better generals. Obviously. And we should... Probably finish infrastructure ideas before we start repairing these. All right, True Dagger has been integrated. Was it due to our force limit? We're now two over. Wow, that is easy enough to fix. You're gonna. No, you won't die. Should you accept orcs? Uh, yes. I should also half-state this. Uh, do I want to accept orcs right now, though? No. I want to get court embassies. But then we will. Can you go and orcs get along? Yes. Oh, yes, we have a forward-thinking ruler. That's really good. Bladebreaker is still mad at me. I'm kind of tempted to go beat him up. I don't really have a good CB on him, though. Uh, I can tell you to get a CB. But I'm going to need to seize these. Movement speed and center of trade upgrade cost for admin. Uh, no. We kind of need to take this governing capacity. It's, if you look, I mean, we're we're right at it. And it's more expensive right now to take that. So if we don't have to, then we're not going to. But if I can finish court ideas here, then obviously I will. Woohoo! Uh, Gelatinous Menace. Sure. Sure. Dwarves and orcs and dwarves and elves, dwarves and humans, dwarves and dwarves. Yeah, dwarves really are just a little bit uh, problem. They're just a bit of a problem all the time with everybody for every reason. I don't know what their issue is, but they just got a chip on their shoulder and they refuse to uh, do anything about that. Yes. Oh, God. It's so nice that we don't lose stab when we're demonstrizing. It's so nice. It just it makes it so much faster and so much less painful. Like that. Cobwebs. And you are dying. I get severed ear. Are you a... Really... No? You just built different. Okay. Well, I mean, hey, if you can get a claim, then we could go for it. Are you saving the mana buff for next ruler? Or are you just for Gar? What do you mean am I saving the mana buff for next ruler? What do you mean? What do you mean? Size does matter? Oh, okay, wow. 
Ogres have a long tradition of building monumental fortified settlements, possibly dating back to the time of their giant ancestors. Uh, tradition they maintain to this day, showing significant prowess in the construction, due in part to their size and strength. This is not simply a choice of style, but as it's blatantly clear, ogres are rather tall fellows. With an imposing height of at least 10 feet, they positively need larger dwellings than other races, and often find themselves in awkward situations when living in our cities due to their blundering frames. In hopes of remedying this, a delegation of ogre master masons, architects, and notables has presented the court with a proposal for a series of sweeping reforms to the standards of construction in our realm in order to accommodate to the needs of their growing community. Aware of the seemingly daunting costs, they assure us this style will not only favor their race, but also a reputation as patron of the arts. So until 1518, I can get increased construction cost and time by 15%. Or can stay conservative and only get 5%, but still get a tolerance increase of ogres. Where do I have ogres? here they do have construction time so it would kind of offset that in omdir your mission teach the clan boss oh yeah no we'll we'll definitely wait for this guy full ogre it's all ogre it's all ogre now <laughs> all right we can set up omdir and you know what I should have done I should have given true dagger Omdir because it would have converted it to goblin the state We'll get a mission too? Okay. So there's no reason to accept black orc? Well, I mean, there is a reason. It'll increase our tolerance for orcs a lot. We'll accept them. There we go. They're integrated now. Dagger and Rod 4 is fully integrated. I'm blocked by my vassal here to continue colonizing. Which I don't appreciate. I could grab this to block Orlazam Azdir from grabbing it and force them to colonize up so they get closer to this hold. Uh, is Omnir State having four holds worth moving capital to as anyone who has it, or is it worth staying in the previously developed hold? It's almost always worth it to move to Omdir at some point. Um, but right now, we'll keep our capital where it is. Because we're digging it, and we need to farm mission tree, but it is almost always worth it to move to Omdir. Otherwise, state maintenance in Omdir is going to be super, super high. Super, super high. But if it's your capital, it's super cheap. Also, I have autonomy everywhere. <sighs> Upgrade that to level two. Could start pulling trade here instead of collecting trade here. How do I only have 3%? Or the Zom Ozdir is 82% trade control. That's just... That's just illegal. I'm going to kill him. Four for Omdir? Yes. Thank you. What's my force limit currently? 41. Build two more cannons. How's our expedition doing? Oh, cool. They're also going to die. Awesome. There's zero trade power due to being broken. Ah, right. Best goblin cult? Uh, Ancestor Worship. The one. The dwarf one. If you're a republic. Uh, for anyone else, I don't know. Do we wait till 1518 to repair all these holds so the 
the debuffs go away from the ogre mission. Oh, hey, the expedition actually returned. Cool. All right, repay and let them rest. We also get slime colony till the end of the game, giving 10% local manpower and minus 0 0.05 monthly devastation. And we can complete extracting relics. Uh, we have always been a particularly inventive and resource resourceful species. So not only have we learned to use some of the dwarven relics, but we have also thought of ways to use them that dwarves could have never thought of. With our recent expeditions into the, into the depths of the caverns, we have found plenty of said relics, and perhaps we can make these relics useful to our military, even if they were never intended for that. After all, a better pickaxe is not only better at smashing rocks, but also at smashing thick skulls. And the same logic can be applied to many other artifacts. Uh, we should hold off on this, probably. So we can use the miltech cost. These 500 crowns. None of those are great. That's good. It's fine. Build some governing capacity buildings. Chaos at the court. Okay, I don't care. Uh, I can't build anything in the capital right now. We're we're diggy diggy hole. But one in Omdir wouldn't be bad, because I will want to move my capital to Omdir. Do rebellion separate cult? No, it's it's based on religious groups. Based on religious groups. Newfound decorum, 101 crowns. Man, we were making so much money. Now we're making only 0.31. Such is the cost, I suppose, of having all these forts. Yeah, and statement it's on Omdir. Doesn't help that I have an edict on it, too. But I want to convert it. There's a loan. Rippy dippy. Rippy dippy. Door about 16 is colonized. Just keep moving down. Uh, cancel that. Let's try and cut this off. It all broke and it hurts. Yeah. A mining accident? It's fine. Uh, let's turn our leader into a general. Hopefully he dies sometime soon. Uh, we still have increased tech cost until... 1515, so we're going to wait on this. Yeah, we're also we'll probably spend a decent amount of money on Runet Corruption. Yeah. 2.66 ducats. If I annex you, you'll be done next year. I'm just going to annex him because he's not settling. He's not settling, and I just want him gone. Also, catching up on Diplotech will help keep Clouded Eye loyal. Uh, purple Worm Tunnel Discovered. The work on expanding our hold was interrupted today when our miners almost fell into a massive tunnel that opened up below them. There is no doubt that this tunnel is the work of Purple Worms. By expanding our hold along the walls of the tunnel, we can cut down on a lot of work. We are, however, not the only ones with this idea. It's not unheard of for Purple Worms to crawl through tunnels dug by previous worms. If we use this tunnel, we can't dismiss the possibility of an attack in the future. Yeah, dig around it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dig around it. The last time I did that, it was bad. It was bad. It, it was bad. It doesn't go well. If you fail, you fail big. Very, very big. Snot finger. Yeah, I know. Everybody is upset about everything, and they all... Want their independence and whatnot. 
We're just so damn needy. So damn needy. Okay, build that. Still don't have a claim on Blade Breaker. I'd like to beat them up for money, but... Oh well. Could kill you at any time, once these rebels are all dealt with. Musket or bow? You can increase Miltech cost, I don't really care. Alright, Spider Wretch is finally gone. Taken care of. Let's make sure that all of our edicts are gone. Ooh, yeah, 59 years. That's that's not good. That's definitely not great. That's definitely not great. I don't want to keep paying to convert all this, man. It's expensive. It's expensive. Does it automatically get converted when it becomes goblin, or do I need to convert it manually? And we're updating the new CE4. This is the Bitbucket version, so you can get access to it on the... Uh, Oh, they're killing the Shadow Crown. You yeah, access to it on their Discord. Legion and culture? Okay, no, I'm not gonna convert it. I don't care. Oh, I thought that was my heir that died. Oh, I was gonna be mad. Oh, I was gonna be so mad. We could abdicate here, but like I'd rather it just go away. Preferably. We also need to develop colonialism. It'd be way cheaper to develop it in Virko Kozenad. Way cheaper. But it's also not mithril. You know? One of the Omdir holds? But they're all ruined. They're all ruined, so it's mega expensive. Also, we got glass, copper, and wine. Overall, not the greatest. Fix them. Which one do we want to do? Probably the glass. All of ancestors. Yes, I, I understand that it's defo worth fixing all of them, but we didn't have the money. But now we do. So now we can. I can't just click the button and go into major debt. I mean, I guess I could. Technically speaking, I could do that. It just might not have been the smartest idea in the world to do so. <sighs> when do I kill the dwarves, man? I kill them as soon as I can. As soon as these rebels pop, then we're free. Also, boost our stab back up. Need my prosperity back. Okay, go with this. Uh, I clicked the naval button too. Yeah, 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 whatever. Uh, minus one diplo rep. And a minus five percent all estates loyalty. Man, court ideas is good, huh? Court ideas is good. <laughs> Great events. Uh, can we get three years on this? We can still get you know. We should probably focus. Well, no, we shouldn't focus Diplo because our next guy's good at Diplo. No, we should. We need to catch up. Need to catch up. Court sucks. Are you saying court sucks because court sucks? Or are you saying court sucks because you've heard other content creators say court sucks? That's the difference. Do you actually think court sucks? Or are you just saying it sucks because other people say it sucks? Language lessons. Because you could also say infrastructure sucks, but it doesn't suck if you're in the surface mine. It does suck other way, other places, but it's fine here. Man. 
Why are these orcs so... I mean, I know why they're slow. It's because they have better diplotech than we do. Sheeple. Sheeple, bro. <laughs> I can delete this troop, too. <laughs> They're attacked. That's fine. Copper. He's making so much money. For uniforms. We need to take Miltech here or develop or do something. Or do something. That costs 91 points to develop. I think we're going to develop Verklikosin ad. Upgrade that to level 2. Let's use our Diplo points first. A little bit of admin in there. There we go. Now that will start to spread. You need all holds to 40. I mean, yeah, eventually. We need all holds to 40, obviously, but, uh, you know, short-term things we need versus long-term things we need. I also need to annex him. Uh, there's ogre cannibals in the military. I can't afford to lose the Diplo rep. <laughs> Bro. Casual minus four Diplo rep, and I'm not even a witch king. Not even a witch king. Deve develop my vassal? No, I'm good. Uh, there's the death of our leader. Our heir is fine. Let's get a level two Diplo advisor. And we can complete Teach the Clan Boss. Alright, recently the popularity of technocrats within our nation has grown immensely and consequently their influence on the population has become undeniable. Their thought of one leader ruling as the only one being too unpredictable and inefficient to rule runs rampant across their followers. These followers start to demonstrate in the name of the technocrats, which unintendedly boosted the popularity even more. The leader did not act on these demonstrations, however, and destroyed what little good the people had to say about him. As a response to the sudden outcries, the boss has invited these technocrats to come and teach him how to think in an attempt to maintain the rulership and restore his popularity. Lose 100 crowns, gain 50 government reform progress, and 33% chance of gaining each monarch point for our leader. He's a 354, and he is now a 454. Cool. And now we just need Airnetvir to finish digging and build a courthouse, and then we're good. And we're going to secure this spot that way. Do it. And no current cults. Uh, well, we can look at the other ones now. Cult of the Dragon gives yearly inflation reduction 0.1 and prestige decay minus 0.5%. Cult of Dukin gives 0.5 yearly army tradition and 50% manpower from battles. Avatar gives 0.5 yearly prestige and plus one leaders without upkeep. But I still think we probably go for production efficiency. Inflation, you have a ton of gold. Our inflation is only at 3.5. Think about the money and the colonization. We'll be fine. We'll just buy down the inflation later. I don't care. I don't care. We'll be fine. Don't you worry about it. Don't you worry about it. Gotta get some old Duke and Zealots, huh? Even though we've already converted it. Goblin refugees, give me your money. You are already at level two. Upgrade you to level two. Expand infrastructure. You're level three. You're level two. Okay. Our trader is dead. Uh, cheaper trader sounds good. Hey, we're making money. Let's go. More goblins that I can bully for money? Huge. What do I want to spend my money on? More manpower. I can expand infra in one of the holds. Uh, thank you.
There we go. You're still disloyal. Yeah, 10% for better Diplotech. We're not going to be able to take Miltech on time. I need 900 crowns for embracing the institution currently. Workshop in every cave for later. True. Courthouse in every hold. True. Courthouse in every hold is probably most important at the moment. Lower autonomy everywhere. Frozen Maw's here. Gwed isn't in Eskin yet as far as we can see though, so that's cool. Different. I can't go north because my vassal owns this land. Cool. If he didn't own land inside the Serpent Spine, I'd even consider making him an autonomous vassal. And just letting him do his own thing. Uh, let's complete this for the Miltech cost. And the money. Sell C's. Embrace the institution. Could have done that in a different order. Definitely could have done that in a different order. But it's fine. Uh, yeah, I don't care about any of that. We'll start to collect more trade here. And extra C's. They're disloyal right now. Grombar. Oh, fuck. That's not great. Was really hoping Grombar wouldn't immediately jump on them. There's Air Veer. We need to build a courthouse on it. Okay, we gotta go now. Increase trust with Vassal. You are so right. Uh, favors increase trust. I always forget about that. I only think about taking advantage of favors with allies. Never my Vassals. There we go. He's loyal now. Cool. Dude, fuck you, Kraknivore. Are you serious, man? Like, you're being attacked. Grombar is going to siege down your land, and you're like, no, dude, no. I'm going to fight the goblins, actually. Yeah. I'm going to go fight the goblins right now. Like, really? That's your priority? Fighting the goblins? When your, your capital is going to be sieged down and you're going to die? That does, unfortunately, tell me that Grombar is stronger than me, though. So, like, I guess that's good information. Salty Poey? Always. Always, dude. Always salty. Always angry. Anger. Anger keeps you alive, you know? Makes you feel something. <laughs> uh, I don't care about admin tech. I'll take the idea. Went to the north of the cloud and I. Uh, we have other places we can colonize, though, so I'm not too worried about it. Also, I don't think I... Can I seize his land at war? I can't. It'll increase his disloyalty by 25%. Do I... I don't really want to click a mission in the middle of a war. That never seems like a good idea. There ain't no way. There ain't no way you're about to walk through here and walk down into my land in the middle of this. There ain't no way you're actually about to do that. I'm watching you. I'm waiting. Unseach this stuff. Come on. Unseach your land. 
Um, gears restored. All I got for you. It's just a deep breath. Just a deep breath. That's all I got. You asked. I did ask them to unseize their land. That's true. Not the land I meant. That is a lot of ground bar troops, by the way. That very well may, may be a great conqueror, ground bar. That was a lot of ground bar troops. Like a lot of them. Like a lot. Fifteen, fifteen, and the, yeah. Yeah. I got a feeling. I got a feeling. I got a feeling that, that is a great conqueror ground bar. Okay, maybe I can like push him. No, he's gonna make me fight him. He's gonna make me fight him. I don't want ground bar to own this stuff. Only one way to know we kill ground bar. True. Uh, we probably leave Orlazam Azdir alive, right? Well, no, we don't. Of course, we didn't have to convince Kraken Vor to get out of the war. So, start moving. Got centaurs. Grombar just took tech. Uh, what tech would that be? Okay, so he's behind tech. Damn. We really are playing goblins, huh? <laughs> I forgot. I forgot that we're playing goblins. <laughs> we're playing goblins. Our military sucks, bro. We're bad right now. <laughs> we're even worse than the dwarves. Grumbar's war score is one. They've got one. Uh, he can't take any of that owning forts, no. Uh, no, he can. He can. As long as the owner doesn't control fort. All I'm saying is you be closer to par with dwarves with spider wretch cav. That's that's true. That's true. It would be closer. Uh, tier 5, modernization, advisor cost, or goods produced? Hello, goods produced. I like money. There's Diplotech, which means now it should be good to take that province off of you. And we can start another colony. Uh, yeah, let's keep going south. Let's make our way to hold your cad. Try and snag it. Okay, yeah, we need to reorganize the councils, I know. Yeah, now here comes the fun part. Okay, ground bar's going in. That's good. So we should be safe then to move to each province. <laughs> there goes Orlazama's Deer's troops. Let's just try and get to Kraktenvor's capital. Oh, did he get there first? I don't know how we got there first, but we are in control of the siege. I don't know how that works. Uh, we probably want to save our Abin points so we can core all this stuff. Oh, we're back to one colonist? Rip. Rippy dippy. That's okay. We we got decent amount colonized. We got decent amount colonized. Can't complain. I mean, I could. I could complain about a lot of things. 
I could complain about a whole lot of things. But I won't. But I won't. Apparently they have a Dwarvacron fragment. Do I really care about taking that? I kind of do. I kind of do. Mostly out of spite than anything else. Holy in the following seeds besieging castle. Hey, we were here first. Ground bar. What castle? <laughs> what are you talking about? There's nothing up there. Uh-huh. Yeah, sure. That's why it's called free trade. That's why your mom is called free trade. Got him. Got him. Pillage capital? Uh, I don't know if we can. Oh, yeah, we can. Sure. So pillage capital, more reps, Dwarcon fragments, and money. Works for me. Ah, the Ruby of Ruby Hold. Ruby Hold may be renowned today as one of the largest communities of surface dwarves in Kanor, but some would say it was the reason why the Dwarvar fell. The Hold was established by a group of independent dwarves who later swore fealty to all Dwarov in return for protection and influence. In doing so, they sent the finest ruby they had managed to unearth from their Hold as a show of loyalty. Impressed by both the existence of a Hold so far west and the majestic gift, the High King of the Dwarvacron reforged and added what is now known as the Ruby Gem of the Dwarvacron to it. This act spurned many of the older and more renowned holds in the Dwarvar. Thus, resent the resentment thus caused what would eventually lead to the War of the Bloody Gem, a fratricidal conflict that led all of Dwarav severely weakened and unable to respond when the first Orcish warbands began to emerge from Holger Cad. This gem had been lost to the ages until recently when we discovered that it had been found and promptly seized it. What was now lost is now found, and one thing is certain, this fist-sized ruby shall make a fine addition to our vaults. So really, when you think about it, it's entirely the dwarves' fault that their empire fell apart. The elves really didn't do it. Like, yeah, they dealt the final blow, but the dwarves threw hard. They got jealous over someone else's rock being added to a crown, and then they died. It sounds like they deserved it to me. Sounds like they deserved it. Grombar occupied this province. Huge. Massive. Thank you, game. Alright, Corda. He didn't take anything. He didn't take anything. Okay. Sure. Yeah. I mean, that works. Why not? Don't matter to me. Uh, neighboring countries, subject countries. What sounds like Elvis propaganda? No. You just did you not just listen to me read the event? Did you not just listen to me read the event? That old dwarves got all upset because they added a new gem to the crown, and they're like, wow, I can't believe you did that. And then they did a war over it. And then the elves did the orcs and they killed them. Sounds like they deserve to die. No border due to colony failing. Uh that would that would make sense. Okay, uh, reorganize the councils. The technocrats have been a major asset in ruling our nation for a while now. All our holds have courthouses for the many councils to come and debate in, and public speeches held by higher members of the technocratic councils occur more than once a week. The technocrats still have an issue at hand, however. The ruler still is able to make decisions on his own and takes advantage of that to keep them from the most important decisions. The technocrats plan to use their popularity as a method to increase their influence and request the leader to come to the courthouse and air that beer for a debate to do so. An explosion in councils. It started with some minor increases in volunteers, a few hundred goblins that joined the technocrats. Over a few months, this number had increased severely and now thousands upon thousands have joined. Almost every village and city now has a council to advise and help with administration. There has truly been a large explosion of the councils. 
The clan boss seems to be happy with the change as well, luckily. It increases our production of resources like iron and mushrooms. Additionally, the chances of a revolt are reduced because now people can join the council or talk to them to achieve their wishes. All in all, this unbelievably large explosion in councils will only be beneficial for our society. 50 of each monarch point, 50 government reform progress, and we obtain new missions. All right. Make them an offer. Uh, you can skip this mission if other goblins hate you too much or if no other goblin exists. There are no more goblins left in the entire world. Because we expanded our nation and conquered all the caves we know, our scouts were forced to enter new waters and explore faraway caves that require weeks of preparation. In these new caves, we found several other goblin nations that, although smaller and more inefficient, seem functional and maybe even a bit thriving. We have established a mediocre form of communication with them, but their methods of communication are slower than ours, leading to a delay in proper relations. As our nation is far better than theirs, we should send them an offer to join us so we can enlighten and protect them. Well, here you have it. Okay, is this the... Yeah, so this is the caves. Ten old provinces have caverns. And they get plus one local goods produced. Every province that fulfills the requirements will have their trade goods changed to fungi. So as long as it's not gold, iron, copper, mithril, gems, coal, or dames too. So we should wait on this, right? We should wait on this until we have as many caves as possible and then get the plus one goods produced. It's another? Okay. But think about this. I can get plus one goods produced twice. It's pretty good. Ooh. I think every bone in my body just cracked there. Now we have to complete five expeditions. Man, if only I could colonize the two expeditions that are right on my border. If only, that'd be weird. That'd be weird. Sorry, there's other ones we can go towards. Man, if only I could, you know. Ugh. It's fine. Just seize land? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, just seize land, they say. Just seize land. All the land that I can seize. Let me just seize their entire country real quick. 1612. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe, maybe, maybe just do just seize land piece by piece. What do I seize first? I seize this. That way they for sure can't add this to their... thing. Okay, yeah, we're about to max out on mill points. Hmm. Sure. We'll take it, okay? We'll take it. Mostly because I can build my... <laughs> I can build my manufacturings on my mithril provinces. That's the main reason I took it, but... I, I'm sure there's other reasons I could come up with, too. Okay, we'll go for a level 2 guy here. Ramsteel dwarves. Yep, 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 yep. Now I need to be employing level three advisors. We'll gain 10 reform progress for each hold you own, as well as minus 10% local autonomy in each hold over 40 development. Oh my God, he keeps adding more stuff to his freaking tribal land. Stop, 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 stop. I don't know if blocking settlement growth will actually help. Are there any wonders that can be found? Uh, nope. 
Not near us. Oh, hey, look. Radical reforms. Cool. Uh, trade efficiency. And I do want that guy back. I do want that guy back. Conquistador is dead. Rip. Rippy dippy. I just thought I was stealing a throw. Apparently, because damn. It's almost like the people in Eskin shouldn't be able to just add a bunch of tribal land inside the fucking serpent spine. It's gone from I had to take uh, four provinces to I now again have to take four provinces. Even though I reduced it by one. Are you converting? There. <sighs> and that general is dead as well. All my generals are dying. They're abandoning me in my time of need. We are halfway done demonstrizing. Uh, you see his land, you don't have to colonize it. I mean, yeah, but still. But still. Apparently I can restore a hold. Oh yeah, that's not happening. That is way too expensive. Way too expensive. <clears throat> Uh, we could get you to level three. So let's do that. Yeah, we'll take a stab hit. It's fine. It's fine. Government capacity is good, so we can at the very least half state that. From the darkness. Yes. I understand. I understand. We'll go. We'll do the thing. We'll do the expedition. Which means we need to hold off on infrastructure ideas for now. Mithril and shorts. Uh, okay. 10,000 manpower. Party share at 100. Map the terrain. Raise morale three times. Maybe draft some plans. Sure. Has no supplies. Boy, oh boy, am I glad that it did not let me start without putting in supplies. There we go. Now they can, you know, eat or something important like that. Uh, Valhan Interact, thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. And yes, I do just have the 6k stack standing around doing nothing. So we only have one colonist. All right, and we continue to speed five, as you do in the Serpent Spine. I don't know, maybe there's... Maybe there's crazy people out there that play in the Serpent Spine on, like, speed two. I don't know. I suppose it's possible. I, I don't know how you would do that, but it's possible. You could do it. You do? Why? <laughs> Why would you do that to yourself? Put on a video and chill. Hmm. Uh, you mean like from like really cool YouTubers? Like, pff, I don't know. I don't know. I, like, like uh, I've heard this guy Poe Mew. I think you know. I hear he's he's pretty cool. You know, he, he's got some good videos to watch sometimes. Uh, that's what I've heard though. I, I don't know. Uh, Daggerite Railforge. A remarkable discovery has been made in the lower depths of the hold, where it seems many of the great rail machines were maintained. One of these mean. Machines is a massive mobile foundry, and from the materials found aboard, is capable of creating new Dagrite rails in their entirety. While it doesn't seem capable of laying them on their own, it would certainly make rail repairs much quicker. While we cannot yet excavate it as the machine is far too deep, we can study it and in time perhaps learn how to make it for our own ends. He said chill. What do you... Poe Vita are experience of... Poe vids are an experience of endless yelling at screen. That's not true. That's not true. Sometimes I'm not yelling at the screen. Sometimes. You know. Don't let fucking ego. Don't let it happen. Don't let You have... 
you have no idea how much more chill I am now compared to when I was in like high school. That is called maturing, number one. <laughs> Obviously. Number two, I am much more chill. Much more chill now. Sometimes too chill. Uh, Waffle Fortress, thank you for the two months of Prime. I appreciate it. We are yelling at you through the screen. Is that what those voices are when I'm recording videos? I just hear you guys from like the future yelling back at me. Uh, I think as of late, if I am playing EU4 Aminar and I am not watching Poe on stream slash YouTube on the side, something may be wrong with me. True, true. Everyone else should take that advice. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, I like to play on Speed 2 much play playing Speed 5. I actually don't like playing on Speed 5. Well, not the Surface Mine. I do like playing on Speed 5 and, sur and the Surface Mine. But like regularly, Speed 4 or even Speed 3. I like playing on Speed 3. I don't know. I just, I always feel like when I'm recording or streaming, like Speed 3 is just so slow. Whoa. It just feels so slow, even if I know it's not. Like, I consciously know that it's not super slow, but it just feels slow. I do generally enjoy having your good run on the side of the dwarf around. What do you mean, my good run? You mean all of them? All my runs are good. Thank you very much. Don't don't look for sources about that though. Don't 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 source that. Uh, a meon does not exist. It never happened. It never happened. We can make a ten second adventure in the deep woods. We could use some trade company. I mean, you're not wrong. I did forget to send guys on the colony. You peaked at Elekind? That's not true. That's not true. We did not peek at Elekind. Elekind is just broken. <laughs> Elekind is just broken. So it's very easy to expand like crazy. I'd fight the centaurs. That's fine. What are they going to do? Fight me in the caves? Okay. Have fun getting deleted, centaurs. Bozos. I mean, it was one of the best series. It was good. Man, that final disaster was... Rough. Was rough. Was very rough. Uh, I need to build more units. I need to be scary. I need people to not mess with me. Centaur military? No, we'll we'll stay Gobble military. We'll stay Gobble military. He clearly peaked at mix. Hmm. You know what the saddest part is? I have to redo Mix at some point. Because I did say that we were going to go back and redo all the thing, all the runs that we didn't complete. And Mix is, unfortunately... Ooh, hold redecorating. He's unfortunately in that list. Uh, Cavern of Interest. We have come upon a site unlike any other in the Dwarvar. This temple, if you can call it that, bears crude pictures of the Duke and etched on the cavern walls, along with an altar either rusted or bloodstained. It is clear evidence of an organized religion, and we shudder to imagine what rituals priests may have carried out in such a domain. There's one oddity. Why does one corner of the temple bear a set of manacles, still faintly glowing with old and powerful enchantments? Great Duke and Temple. 0.5 unit prestige till the end of the game. Uh, don't do that monument. You will move it in the All Clan mission tree and get special offers, so save it. Okay. Uh, after months of relentless exploration, our expedition finally reached what seemed to be the end of their current endeavor. However, perhaps based on a whim or some sort of deeply honed intuition, the expedition leaders decided to push forward through one last unassuming tunnel. As they pressed forward, the tunnel widened, revealing a massive cave network with tunnels spreading to all directions, and at the center of this network, an awe-inspiring sight the entrance to a massive cave, a solemn cathedral in the belly of the earth, glistening stalactites hanging like chandeliers. Yet the grand door was juxtaposed by a sense of unease. A thick shroud of cobwebs draped the entrance, a testament to time's passage and nature's reclamation. Yet a faint, acrid scent, akin to bile rising from a stomach, implied some life still remained in this desolate space. Like a gossamer veils, the cobwebs hinted at the perils within. Beware what crawls in the dark. Is this the spider one? Yeah, it's just a spider one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Placate Clouded Eye. Uh, yeah. 
spy don't say spider monk but don't don't say that what do you mean <laughs> bro <laughs> they're just adding more tribal land everywhere <laughs> why are you like this bro why are you like this Okay, you can be my new thing. <sighs> Chat be normal. Difficulty level impossible, bro. It's a spider, bro. It's a spider. Why why would you say spider mommy? It's a spider, bro. It's just a spider. Like that's crazy of you. That's crazy for you guys. I don't know what to tell you. Maybe I'm just built different. I'm not the weird one here. You guys are the weird ones. What is Mix? It is a adventurer tag that spawns in the in Alien tier. Your gnolls. You do pirate stuff. But which would be fun, except for the fact that, you know, you have to play as a knoll, which instantly makes it worse. I'm a big knoll hater. Big big knoll player hater. Maybe children, if your chat is weird, I don't need a poll. I already know. I already know that you are all weird. Okay. Congratulations. Go and sell C's. That gives me a frick ton of money. A metric frick ton, you could say. Build manufacturers. No one is more weirder than me. True, you're British. That immediately makes you the weirdest you can possibly be. Ooh, got him. That was, oh man, that was good. That was good. I'm sorry for, you know, lining up the shot like that and, and taking it. But damn, I saw the opportunity and I was not going to let it go. Can't let the British get away with anything, boys. Can't do it. Got to keep them in line. <laughs> Cordass in every hold. Uh, I don't know. No. Mm, yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. More America than you? That's just that's just not true. I don't I don't know what you mean by that, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure that I'm like a hundo percent American. Like I'm I'm like pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I want this trade efficiency guy. Well, this is Spider Matrix, so it's currently a Spider Mommy. No, that's not what that that's not what it means when you say that. And you know that I'm correct. That's not what that means. Don't even don't even try. Shit. Man, that's what I get for trying to make a claim instead of just doing a monstrous conquest. Blade Breaker gets first. I mean, we have 20,000 guy. I'm pretty sure I can kick Blade Breaker's ass. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and scudge Clouded Eye. So they don't join any of my wars. Going to build a fort here. And he literally took everything. Okay. I don't actually want to fight him yet, though. Because, again, he has the tribe land too. So, if I attack him, then he's just going to create more stuff. Like, more land behind it. And then I have to deal with that. So, I think we just simply won't. Just simply won't. New model army, that's fine. That's fine with me. And you make that out of your bitch. Uh, they were dumb. And they colonized into the serpent spine. And I got sick and tired of that. And so I wouldn't have killed him. Wow, you have a lot of troops. Huh. I'm gonna build a fort there. Yeah, they colonized in here, and then I vassalized them, and then Marhold attacked them in the middle of it, so I inherited the war, and then I went and killed Marhold. Because ain't no way. Ain't no way I'm letting Marhold live. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Do I have another expedition somewhere? Oh, yeah. It's the... 
Yeah, 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 it's a thing. Okay, we're about to max out on mill points, and it is way too early to think about taking tech. So instead, we'll just start developing holds. There you go. That'll work. You see some more land from these guys? No, they're just oil. Land from these? No. It's not time yet. We got two years. We got two years. Have, to have some particular -ess. It's fine. Let's get these guys drilling. Who owns the Serpent's Veil? Uh, Orlazam Ozdir does. Orlazam Ozdir. Refuge of a Ramsteel Noble. Not all members of the nobility have it as good as the nobility. Not all members of the nobility have it as good as the nobility. Oh, but nobility capitalized. Okay, sure. A foreign noble, his family and his servants have been exiled from the hold of Orlazam Azdir. His reasons for his banishment are a mystery to us as he requests sanctuary. Sure. <laughs> Capitalized, so the estate is <laughs> different. The nobility. <laughs> the better nobility. Uh, I would like to, yes, take this, get that fort maintenance. And the noble reveals himself. Ever since the man appeared at the rail skulker court, he has been a mystery to our own elite class. Nobody knows his name, nor have they been able to find any information about this secret of man. That is until today. The nobleman turns out to be cursed by a higher power. Wherever he goes, bad luck follows him. The queen of Orlazam Azdir is tired of dealing with this most fortunate man. To the noble's luck, Zazak I has more patience. As long as he does not touch anything, that is. Okay. Uh, I need to dig my hold. My capital. That's what I should have developed. What am I doing developing random things? Uh, yeah. You are... Uh, cowards. I mean, they are goblins, so... Does track. Going to expand administration in our capital. Going to get it done. Okay, now you can get back to drilling. Tunnels of Woe has been converted. Sure. Just prestige, I guess. Placate them again. Seize their land again. <laughs> That event you guys are so weird There are so many different options Really uh, Yep Large decrease of monstrosity Sounds great Welcome in the orcs Of course Ooh And we've hit the appetite layer Appetite is best known For its use as an index mineral With a hardness of 5 In the Dwa's hardness scale It is usually green in color But can be yellow Brown Blue Purple Pink Or colorless these colors are often so vivid that Appetite has frequently been cut as a gemstone. Appetite is a brittle material. It breaks by both fracture and cleavage, but the cleavage is generally indistinct. We face such a mineral while digging. Should we keep digging through? Uh, yes, of course we should. Just let me make it to where I'm not going to take a load first. Do they still have tribal land? Oh no, they still have tribal land. Yeah, no, they, they keep expanding it. I'm in a, I'm in a competition with my own vassal to see if I can stop them from expanding. I also still haven't gotten any claims. It's fine. I have a border with them now. Seeking counsel from the ancestors. Uh, we definitely want admin points.
And we're now caught up on Diplo, so we can switch our focus over to Admin. Ogre minorities? Uh, I don't really want autonomy in Omdir, but... I would like to get them up to integrated. And I will take that Inno as well. Thank you. Train wreck. Yep, clear it out. No choice. Gotta clear those out. Don't want movement speed debuffs. Okay, so we have Dwarf Hope as a fort. We have foreign investors. Sure. Beautiful hold. Sure. Uh, Kikimig Outlet is also a fort. So that's doing good. I think that's a Sariand right there. And I don't think they will appreciate me getting Hold Your Cad very much, but I also don't really care. You get another one, I would lock them in. Yeah, but they have to settle it first. They have to settle it, and then they have to not immediately add in other tribal land above it. The good news is, is they're running out of room. So, that's good. Oh, you mean I colonize it? Oh, uh, that's true. It's pretty smart. Pretty smart. And now they're stuck. Now we just let Blade Breaker do all their shenanigans up here, and then we'll be good. Convert that. Get rid of that edict. Get rid of that edict. Keep that one on for now. Uh, I've had good luck with the magma veins. Yeah, I don't. I don't trust like that. I don't trust magma veins like that. Big Dartax. Not anymore. They might have been at one point, but uh, they are a vassal under Eerlium now. How do you watch the your progress? Uh. Whew. I'm doing okay. We're at 28 of 100. Go over Rabbit Street's quite fun. Yeah, we'll have to do that at some point. Let's get a claim on Shattered Crown. Don't want to lose my demonstration progress for that. You'll need to stop drilling. Do these ram steel separatists. You like my first diplomat? What? Baz Baz the Slaver? That guy? <laughs> that one? Right. You're taken care of. Foreign education for an heir. I suppose. I suppose so. Bitgo the Warlord. One stab, 25 Diplo points. Thank you, Bitgo. What a nice guy. What a nice guy. Let's build some more cannons. Crack a five seller increased dwarf moment. That's what they get for leaving their little caves. Alright, our truce with Orlazam Ozdir is up. Should I do Monstrous Conquest here? Yeah, I probably should. Because remember what happened the last time I tried to get a claim? <laughs> remember what happened last time I did that? Someone else was able to uh, slip in there and take it from me. And I'm not interested in letting Grombar do that. No thanks. I'd rather just lose two monsterization progress. We'll figure it out. Damn, they're blasting through my forts though. Holy shit. What are you doing? 43% siege ability? What? 
Oh. Yeah, that'd do it. Yeah, you know, offensive. Yeah. That, that'd do it, all right. Get out of here. You stupid, ugly dwarves. Follow him in. Claim your 38. There. There, there, there. Okay. You explore. Finish infrastructure ideas. Minus 25% construction time. Minus 100% expand administration cost. Minus 10% dev cost. We also get a very good policy of minus one yearly corruption and plus 10 max absolutism. You couldn't tell. That was not real. That's... I don't... It's not good. It'll be good later, except for the fact that we'll be a technocracy, which means we probably won't have any absolutism. Does tend to make it a little bit more worthless. Okay, so peace deal. I want you to stop existing. Thank you. It's nothing personal. Uh, you are twenty-eight. You will, however. Have a ton of corruption. Yeah, well, you know what? It's fine. It's fine. Who doesn't like a little corruption every now and again, right? Lowers your natural unrest. Think about it. Think about it. Lowers your natural unrest. All right, and now we have the Chromium Crown. Even stripped bare of the gems that once adorned it, the bare Dwarver Crown remains a fearsome sight. Adorned with platinum, surfacing thanks to the Dwarves of Horaz or Doom, it was made from chromium, the heaviest metal in existence. Truly, it is a masterful piece of work. After we located it, our smiths have restored it as best they were able, and it will make a fine addition to our vaults. And who knows, if we were able to locate all of the seven gems that once studded its surface, we would have a convincing claim to the entirety of the Serpent Spine. Yeah. But you have to own the entirety of the serpent spine to even do that. So it doesn't matter. And I don't have enough admin points. Like, not even close to enough admin points. Like, not even slightly kind of close. Like, not even slightly kind of sort of close. Because I just took that idea. You gotta be up the command. Yeah, but if I'm beating up the command, I am not taking the jade i'm not spending 40 percent of my freaking war score on taking that i'm taking money and i'm taking land from the command so that way when i, when I inevitably have to fight them again they're not as bad oh that's not good all right we now have board with ground bar silver tongue entrepreneur forty-five thousand troops Small decrease in monstrosity. I paid 454 ducats for a small decrease in monstrosity? Really? Really? Convert Omdir. That's fine. We can afford to run two colonies at once, so we'll just let this keep going. I do want to make sure that we change its culture, though. I know he probably won't attack. Oh, I'm not worried about him attacking us. If he attacks us, he attacks us. Whatever. We'll just beat him. We'll just beat him. Okay. Severed Ear is going to attack Blade Breaker. Great. Uh, the Emptiness. Contact with other races is never a pleasant affair, but contact with a giant kin is beyond uncomfortable. Trade caravans passing through their lands often return with fewer goblins than they left with, paying tolls of blood and meat just to get by with their goods intact. One party had left with a shaman on it to potentially negotiate peace with the locals, strapped with goods and supplies ready to feed a goblin for a hundred days, and if lucky, a small group of ogres for a tenth of that time. What returned was unsettling. 
The shaman returned bearing eyes as black as pitch, his body distended and bloated, his mouth dripping with monstrous blood that was not his own. His companions were gone, and the flesh of ogres was present in his cart, a single corpse with a torn open stomach being the most complete one there. The shaman was and remains a gibbering mess, speaking of an endless maw that called to him to eat and eat and eat, consuming his very being with a maddening emptiness. Shockingly, a court has formed around this madman, attracting the ravenous hunger of both the mad and hedonistic alike. I'm so hungry. <clears throat> Dill points going to be what? 20 years at least, so technically you paid 400 crowns for at least 240 Dippo down. Yeah. Yeah, but like we're gonna go, we're gonna go Republic. I don't know when we're gonna go Republic. To be fair, all I know is that I need to do another expedition, and we need to be Admin Tech Thirteen, where I can complete this mission, and then I need to take this away from my vassal to complete another one. I want you to pay me money. Just kidding. I need that land. Uh, we could reform out of being a tribe here. Do we... We probably want to, right? Yeah. Yeah? Should we wait until we demonsterize to do it? Or we just stay tribal again. Yeah, we demonstrate first. Otherwise, we're going to start getting stab hits. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we're almost demonstrate, so we're good. You put now, you know, you get like three minus stabs demonstrate. Yeah, we will immediately, just straight away. Just straight away. Uh, we could take Diplotech, or I could not. And instead, I could... Do that. And make more money. Cursed Howl, no longer a valid rival. I could still send this Humiliate Rival CB off. Let's do it. <laughs> Going and fighting in the deep woods. Actually, hold on. I need to choose my new infantry. Okay. Uh, we go from pebble slingers to burner teams. Sure. It was a peaceful day in the caverns when a curious goblin decided to combine pressurized gelatin with a small bit of fire. Am I just creating flamethrowers again? The result was catastrophic and killed him almost instantly, but luckily his companions chose to adapt these principles into the first fire burners, a form of rudimentary flamethrower. I literally just did flamethrowers again. Literally two runs in a row, flamethrowers. Flaming gelatin from cave oozes would be launched from handheld pressurizers, clinging to whichever sorry victim it pointed at or the guy next to him. Still working out the accuracy issues. Damn. Time to, <laughs> time to set fire to deep woods, boys. We're gonna burn this force down. Yeehaw. All right, you need to deal with this. Thank you. Right, now we go here. Uh, province war score for different other religions. Sure. What do you mean you're too afraid of these guys? You have 15,000 troops. You're fine. Go kill them. I'm missing 2,000 cannons. Right, they're up there. That's fine. Uh, Non-monstrous advisor? Yes. Yes. You want me to put a bunch more colonies above? Yes.
No. That's what I get for not paying attention. That's what I get for not paying attention and getting distracted by all the other events. The curse of speed five. Getting what I deserve. Uh, we need a level three. I have an advisor for sure. Uh oh. Why is your general so cracked? Hey, I need a general. I need I need one of you to be good. Okay? I need some I need some good rolls here. What do you guys got? Give me something. Someone someone choose. Never mind. I don't even have any mill points. I lied to you. And it immediately got destroyed because... Uh, oh, God. Okay, I'm struggling. I'm struggling. I'm struggling. I'm losing my focus. You redeemed ages ago? That's true, but I didn't ask then. Did I? <clears throat> no. And there we go. We can see a lot of the world. Gwen and Laurent are staring at each other, doing nothing. Jad lives, but Raj is killing them. Ilium, strong, probably gonna form a Phoenix Empire. Abdul Tungur, popping off, somehow. They're allied to Syrian, so they're getting carried. Got it. They, of course, want Airnetvir and Omdir, even though they don't own a single province in the Serpent Spine. Average dwarf. Uh, Grombar's here. Rockcleaver is doing well. Severed Ears is doing well. Heart Grinder. Deadfang is doing really well for themselves. So it's a very orcish Eskin. Like, Super orcish Eskin. Look at Segdir. They're vibing. They're allied to Jadari. Wait a second. Wait. <laughs> Hold up. Wait a second. That's not how that works. Did he, like, annex Segdir and then lost for vassals? Like, how did you... How did you manage to do this? Okay. Uh-huh. What? He li what? He didn't border it. Unless Segdir is his vassal right now. But no, even then he couldn't take it because he doesn't have a border. He's just straight up cheating. He's just AI straight up cheating. Vassalized Greedy Grin? No, because this wasn't Greedy Grin. Or sorry, no. He wouldn't be able to annex Greedy Here, we go back, we go back, we go back, we go back, we go back. We go back, we watch again, okay? We watch again. Okay, we watch, we watch. So Virgo Gulan, so here's Greedy Grin, right? They're migrating over. Greedy Grin is now here. They have not bordered anyone else so far. They haven't bordered a single person. Okay. They migrate, they go back. They're chilling. They still have not bordered a single person yet. Virgo Gulan owns things in Bulwar. Jad takes Virgo Gulan, the capital. Virgo Gulan is still alive. Greedy Grin still has not bordered a single person yet. And they're still monstrous at this point. So they're not allied to Segdir or to Virgo Gulan. There's no way. Their Shadow Dreamer, Greedy Grin starts to colonize. Shadow Dreamer is chilling up here. They're next to Greedy Grin. Uh huh. Okay, Shadow Dreamer is making his way across the top. He now borders Rukku Gulan. He's still right here. Again, Greedy Grin has not bordered a single person yet. Okay. Shadow Dreamer moves down into Kratos Beach. Breach. 
Okay. He's boarded with Verko Gulan. Verko Gulan at this point could be a Jad Vassal. It is possible. But it's not. Because Shadow Dreamer declares war on Verko Gulan and takes a province in the West Great Cavern. Yes, and then and then Shadow Dreamer takes. So this was a colony. He sees the colony in the middle of the war. He then takes this in the peace deal, which means he now borders Jad. Okay, okay. He's annexed by Jab, which then automatically annexes Greedy Grin. Shadow Dreamer allied Greedy Grin. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if he vassalized him. It doesn't matter if he allied him. He still would not be able to take this land. He doesn't have the reach for it. Greedy Grin doesn't, doesn't border anybody. Yeah, and Jad can't core it. He can't core this land because he shouldn't have been able to take it. He's literally cheating. The AI is literally cheating. Caught red-handed in 4K. In 4K. I wish I could see the Diplo relations. Like, he could have been allied to Shadow Dreamer or he could have been vassalized by Shadow Dreamer. Either way, he would not have been able to actually fully annex him. Can't course, they can't annex. Right. And it's not even like it was, uh, they had a border colony. Like, they're just out here on their own. But Segnir is allied with Jad. But that wouldn't give Jad the ability to annex it. Province history. Province history. Okay, September 16th, Human Core, Greedy Grin. Yeah, he, he just keeps... Was discovered by the Company of Grudge Bearers. Okay. Discovered by Greedy Grin, annexed by Greedy Grin, Core of Greedy Grin. Right, yeah. They keep going back and forth. They build a castle there, becomes uncolonized, abandoned Old Faith, became Old Dukin. Once again, comes back to Greedy Grin. They leave again. They come back again. They leave again. They come back again. Mm-hmm. 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 Shadow Dreamer borders them in 1476. So then a marketplace. Okay, so at no point did they get occupied by Shadow Dreamer. It was just discovered. So they must have been allied. In 1502, they were discovered by Jadari, which means they're at war in 1502, right? That's the only way Jad would get vision of this. Unless he completed the mission to do the exploration in here, but I don't think he... I don't know if he could. Talk about Eliana. Liberated from enemy occupation was occupied by Segdir, was living for enemy occupation, was annexed by Jadari. So, what must have happened is Segdir occupied the province. They were all occupied by Segdir, who does have the range but then Jad takes it in the peace deal somehow, but it calculates based off of Segdir's land. We need to go back to the, to when they, they peace out. Cause I don't know if Segdir bordered them at that time. I'm so confused. <laughs> I'm so confused.
Okay. They still don't border. No, he literally, he didn't border him at all. He literally, there's no border at all. So not even Segdir could take it. Not even Segdir could take it. You can see the colonies. The colonies get filled in with their, their color. That's crazy. That's crazy. Jad should build different. I don't, I don't know. He, he is the main character, so. To download Sagdir to give him uncorable land in the peace deal? You can't do that, though. You can't give people land they can't core. Chad vassalized Grim Annex. No, he didn't. He he couldn't annex him if it wasn't vassal because he doesn't have a border. And and he does, it's not in colonial range. And two, if... I don't know when he would have gotten the vassalage. How did Jad receive promise sometime through Jihad? <laughs> Hold wasn't colony. Yeah, and neither was Dwarvod 31. Because Hehogram's mausoleum was a colony. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Something something bugged out there. I don't know if that's a Bitbucket thing. I don't know if it's an EU4 thing. I don't know if it's a Jad thing. AI can give. But Segdir wouldn't give it over because Segdir wants Hehodovar and he would have wanted Hehodovar too. It's not like he wouldn't have wanted it. The moment he discovered the hold, he'd want it. And if we look at the province history, the last person to occupy it before it got annexed. No, no, wait. No, yeah, because it got liberated from enemy occupation when it was annexed. The last person to occupy it was Segdir. Could have been cursed peace deal. No, I'm pretty sure he used uh, anti monstrous on Shadow Dreamer. He can't core this either because the colony fell apart. I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> Just built different. Just built different. Just built different. All right. Well, you know what? We're gonna end on that because now my brain hurts. Now my brain hurts. AI hey, just casually cheating. Just casually cheating. True. 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 Um, so we'll be back tomorrow, maybe. I actually don't know if we're going to be live tomorrow. It's a solid maybe. Uh, but for sure Sunday, but maybe tomorrow. Maybe. Um, I think possibly Jad will stay with OE from Uncord Hold forever now. That's true. That's true. The rest of this is free. Because there were colonies, but that will have the OE. Uh, also, announcement. Oh, God, you guys are going to hate me for this. You guys are going to really, really hate me for this. Uh, I'm going to be participating in Lambert's MP game starting on Thursday. Now, I know, I know you're going to say, hold on, Poe, time out, wait a minute. We've been asking for an MP game for months, and the first thing you do is to go and join someone else's MP game? <laughs> Look. Look, look, look. I'm casting. No, I'm playing. Look, I know. I know that you guys want the MP game. Okay. I understand. I got it. How about this? When the full release of Ambinar comes out, so in, you know, November, whatever that is, we do our own multiplayer game. Yes? Yes? Good. Yeah. See? No reason to be mad. It'll be fine. But that's going to be on Thursdays, uh, I think at 11 a.m. my time, is when it will start. Um, who have you asked to play as? I cannot tell you that yet. That is top secret information, I think. I'm pretty sure that he hasn't announced it yet. Unless it happened when I was streaming, and it has not. So, yeah, no. Top secret information. Can't tell you who I'm going to be playing as. So you'll have to wait and see. You have to wait and see. Uh, Lambert, have you seen his choice of graphical mods? Well, great news. You don't have to use the graphical mods. You, you, you just don't have to do that. What did I just miss? Uh, I'm going to be taking part in Lambert's MP game on Thursdays. Going forward for a while. 
so yeah that will be happening uh let's see let's see let's see who is live right now who can i raid let's see here anyone out there playing some ambinar right now gotta always check always check for the ambinar viewers always check streamers the and then i hear myself terrible 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 Um, no, not in the, I probably want to read someone also speaks English just because I know my audience speaks English. Uh, well, they were uses one. Well, you don't have that. You don't have to use like their, um, graphical mods. Playing goblins and vampires. So next is a vampire goblin. Huge. He streams and watch. Oh, that's fine. But we, we're not going to have that. Uh, can you add the MP streams to the Twitch calendar? Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, I could do that. I could do that. All right. Uh, well, you know what? We're just going to wrap it up here then. Uh, and yeah, we'll continue probably tomorrow. The only reason I say probably is I may just watch Flurry do his three mountains. Because uh, that is going to be tomorrow, I'm pretty sure. I'm like fairly confident that it's tomorrow and I may just want to watch that. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. If he's even still, if he's even still live by the time that I wake up, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but that's going to do it for today. I'd like to thank you all for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.